there's a lot of stuff going on um, tonight for us to, to take a look at. Um, if you take a look at kind of the agendas that's listed here. Inside the, the warrant articles, there are the typical ones that relate to um, warrant articles that are going to come up. And us reviewing those to see, you know, get our kind of muster and see what's going on there. There are also a couple of other articles that are in here that relate to a different <coughs> activity for FinCom that hasn't, in my tenure, hasn't been used very often, hasn't been discussed very often, which is much more of an oversight kind of function of um, town boards, committees, activities, and things like that. And there are two articles in here um, that talk about that. One related to a specific request from the Board of Selectmen um, that relates to looking at RMLD. Um, in light of some of the things that, that they uh, recently had, some issues that they had, um, and it's actually in a broader context an issue of what FinCom can and should be doing as kind of an outside oversight body and looking at different things around the town. And it may be, and we'll talk specifically to that issue, that um, RMLD may be one of the first that we look at, but conceivably the town in general both the schools um, are also there. Right now, the way things are written, and, and I'm going into too much detail back off, but one of the articles is kind of to be very specific and get something started. The other is more of a housekeeping issue to make sure that the process um, is available um, by two different means, one being town meeting taking a vote. But given that we don't have town meetings all the time, there may be other reasons to, uh, to look at things. And so that, that's what's going to happen in that article. The other thing is that, and, and part of this oversight activity, is looking at the library building project and talking about what's going on there. Karen has been very active um, with that group um, and trying to help bring kind of a new piece um, to what's going on. It's a substantial amount of money that the town is going to be spending, and it's important that we have as much appropriate oversight I guess, as, as possible and to help out a group that really is not financially driven. thousand in September for some things that are listed there. I, I, I have details. I know about all but one of them. I'll, I'll get to that when you get to the voting money. Uh, and then we're going to ask for another big chunk in November. Uh, the first amount will not need any free cash, and I'll review that shortly. The second amount in November almost surely will need some free cash. And then we're deleting or, <coughs> or removing, I should say, over a million out of the FY16 budget. Um, Historically, sometimes we've tried to balance a couple years at a time. Last year we didn't bother because Mary DeLi was, was on the way out, so we didn't balance FY16. Now FY16 is just about balanced. Uh, it's 200000 over, which is close enough to be balanced at this time of year. <coughs> FY17 doesn't look so good. So again, um, you know, this is just uh, putting stuff in the capital plan, changing stuff in the capital plan, and there's an issue in the waterfront also, all of you. This doesn't spend it. And I'll, I'll make a comment that um, sometimes you'll see, as is near the bottom of page seven, the selectman last night did take a position on all the articles, or most of the articles. So, just to review for everybody, we <coughs> end up doing two different related articles to anything going on with capital activities. One is just getting it onto the plan so that it can be voted on, and the second one is actually to vote the money. So three is kind of getting it onto the plan. In a town meeting, we go through it the same way. This article puts it on the plan. And then the second one is actually a vote here and on. And we vote on both. Yeah, and I should go into a little more detail now is as good a time as any and, and the things that are being requested in September, which we'll get to that shortly. Um, we desperately need a new snow holder, unfortunately, for 150000 We had planned to get that in a couple of years. The item I know very little about, I asked the superintendent to give me some information, and I'm sure he will before town meeting, but he's requesting 75000 in school technology funds to be advanced from the FY16 capital plan into the current year. I just don't know the details. Um, the Joshua Eaton roof replacement project was budgeted as two 
$392,000 chunks year by year, two years in a row. Um, they have learned that the first piece is a little more expensive than that because they have to do a lot of design work and go out for bid a little differently than was expected of budget. So there's a little more expensive piece up front. So they want to bump that to four twenty-five right away. And then you'll see in November, I think it will be very advantageous to bring the second piece out of FY16 where we won't be balanced, get it authorized in November because they, then they can bid it in the winter and be ready to go next summer and finish the whole project. Uh, and at some point, I think you'll see we have pretty good cash. So it was originally two pieces thing? Two pieces of 392. And so on, and now it's thirty or $40,000 higher, not a big change, but compressed a little bit into the one year. Um, next thing, um, you remember town meeting where we had some polling, I'd like to say voting, but that's not legal, some polling, getting opinions for people. We've actually gone out and purchased them. Um, they're due later this week. Um, we purchased them regardless of when they, whether anyone funds this, but it'd be nice to get the funds. Um, and then there's a cemetery online module that we want to move up a year again, part of the balance, FY16. In town facilities. Sorry, what's a cemetery on that? Well, it's an online module. There's twelve thousand dollars in it. <laughs> you can go right from your chair right into the ground. Video this is great. I got some retired tables. I'm not sure. No, we have. If you if you go on the town's website, a lot of people don't know this, but we have a pretty interesting cemetery online system, and this is to expand that. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of people from out of state and from anywhere go on to websites trying to find relatives and where they are. So if they're going to come visit Massachusetts, they'll understand where to go in the cemetery. And this is just to allow a little bit more enhancement. Um, it's surprising how often that module is used, the kind of one we have when we really need to update it. There's a little bit of money moving around in uh, town facilities. Um, we needed to do we needed to do some HVAC work in the police station. Some uh, flooring was budgeted and not needed, so the money's being moved from flooring to HVAC and then being increased by six thousand. Uh, masonry repairs were not needed at Parker; they are needed at the high school, so that's just a move. And then lastly, uh, we had thirty-nine thousand uh, in the capital plan for an elderly human services van, but we got a very nice grant. So we don't need twenty-five thousand of that. So we'll reduce capital so twenty-five thousand. Um, community services, Jane Burns and Jim Delios. They, yeah, it was it was much higher and very successful than I thought. Yeah. yeah. So that's the uh, near-term uh, capital that we'd like to spend. It's obviously the snow snowball, the snow plows, the big one. And why isn't this impact? Because um, I'll show you later oh. what we're cutting. It's mostly a debt payment that okay. we don't have to make this year. It's larger than this total. <coughs> and also, um, we're not allowed to spend free cash until it's certified. And my guess is it may or may not be certified by September 20th. I guess not. So we, we tried not to spend it for that reason. Do you want to walk through the other two pieces? November of the 16th? Sure. The November is the second part of the roof. There's some repairs needed at the multi-purpose room in Parker. I know where it is. I don't really know the nature of the repairs. They haven't written that one up yet. There is a memo in your packet that went out over the weekend, and it's included in here on the fuel management system and some of the other DPW requests. Um, the fuel management system is a little bit tricky because they need um, they need work in the yard. What's in the capital plan is two one one and a half million dollar items. One's called a cemetery garage, one's called cold storage. And that's been in there for at least five years. Um, and I don't know uh, how much of this you know, you may not know a lot of it. Uh, DPW got a design for the DPW yard to include everything there. And they had estimated instead of three million, it might go to five million. And I said, well, you know, that's the right thing. Put it together to see what it comes out as. They gave a very nice presentation to the selectmen, I'll say in March or April. It was March because it was the old board. Um, really good presentation, but without any dollars. So they've been working on dollars, and when I say they, there's a consultant hired. Um, we finally got the figures in either June or July. It's a good thing I was sitting down. 
uh, 18 to 20 million dollars. Oh, <coughs> my goodness. I said, can you fit in kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're working on plan B Wow! because that's just not going to happen, not all at once at least. So the first step is to, if any of you have been down there, you know that if you're going to recycle or do anything down there, you have to take your life in your hands and cross the yard and find the office and find out where to put recycling stuff and hope no one packs over you. Um, we're going to make it so that there's no public access except at the very front gate and have all the recycling stuff on the left and have it be all self-serve. Um, it's just not safe to have it done that way. And if the cemetery garage is ever deemed unsafe, we'll close it and move them down there. Now it's just still inconvenient, but you know, it's, it's safe, at least from what I understand. Oh, there was some miscommunication, though, between sort of scope. <laughs> right. You know, and... Obviously, well, one of the issues actually, it's, it's, it's the town's fault for 20 years. Uh, DPW used to have round numbers 125 employees. They now have 45. My goodness. Guess how all the work all gets done? Big toys, lots of equipment. They never change the size of their garage. They have two to three times the volume of equipment now, and they stuff it in at all angles. So it was, it was never properly thought through other than we can't afford all these workers, we have to keep getting rid of them, and we can afford a better piece of equipment that's much more productive so we can still get the work done. Mm -hmm. But when you think of uh, town and schools, think of any function that's close to what it used to be 25 years ago in terms of productivity, and it's one-third as many workers, you won't find it. There's just no way. <coughs> this is the hidden cost of all that activity is the facility was not studied properly. And, you know, it's understandable. It's, How much do we spend with that consultant fee? There was 100000 and then 50000 back-to-back in the budget. I think we're somewhere in the 78000 area. Uh, and a, a dollar figure was just never part of the equation until very recently. You know, and when I saw the presentation, I knew it was more than 3 to $5 million. I really had no idea it was anything close to this. Because, again, you're building, you know, a warehouse for trucks by and large. Still yeah. But some of it is offices. They designed it so that all of DPW that's in this building and other places can all be in one place. So it's arguable what would really happen. But, you know, again, you don't do this, it saves a million or two out of 18. It doesn't really matter. You know, the order of magnitude was, was just a little too high. So we're working on some other options. I think it does go back to the point of important. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And obviously, we, you know, if, if for some reason we end up with an option B that's not in that location, we probably want to spend 80000 on the fuel management system, but we really have to. It's really not safe to keep it the way it is anymore. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but to see if it's full, they have to actually open the top and, and put a match and look down. Oh, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> honestly. Or <laughs> maybe cigar. <laughs> It's just, it's not, not as well as you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, only your hair if it gets singed. Um, so that's just an expense we, we have to do. Um, for the generator, uh, this was a discussion that Karen will be familiar with for the library. We had hoped that a generator could be put in the library, but it's clear that it's not going to be put in the library, so we want to add one to town hall. Um, we have $80,000 this year to do some town hall renovations. If any of you are interested, I'll take you a tour of the basement sometime. You could be horrified. We, it's the only time in your life you'll be able to physically touch a book from the 1600s that's just in a damp closet. <laughs> you know, our historic collection is just, it's in the basement. You know, what can I say? So <clears throat> part of the thing is to take better care of some of the stuff we have in the building. And part of it is to um, move some people within the building around to be much more functional. Um, so part of, since we were doing that, we thought, let's tuck the generator in as a placeholder in November, and we may well be back to town meeting with a request to increase the 80000 for the work that's going to be made downstairs. And what would the generator do here? Um, like read, we I don't have a generator in this yeah. building, and for instance, we have uh, medical and health supplies that when we lose power, two people have to drive it home. That's not really the best well, solution. Well, I'm surprised the letter came from Chief Burns. Yeah. No. He's the emergency management director. Oh, 
So, oh, so okay. this is so all emergency management. Room. management room. Okay. Yeah. Whether or not we have a public shelter here, it would be an option. The senior center is probably a better first choice. Mm -hmm. But if it's wide scale, you'd need that. We haven't, I've talked to the facilities director, but we've never really sat down as a group and discussed how much of this building. So it's really a placeholder for now. Uh, we were going to ask for it in September. And after a chat with the facilities department last week, they're just not ready. And they said, all right, let's do it in November. We just want to make sure we do it right. Yeah, I, I read, I mean, I read what you wrote. In Besides the medical supplies, I can't, I mean, just walking around, I can't imagine when you put a cot in here, you know, as a, <laughs> for people, you know what I mean, as a, as a shelter. I just wonder if, like, you know what I mean? Is I'm manager's office. So, all right. <laughs> I'm bunking in, we're bunking in with you. All right. Um, uh, but that was, that was my only question. <clears throat> so, the, the idea is, um, first of all, to me, a lot more building, public buildings should have generators than do in this town. Uh, but if, if we had some kind of longer term emergency and disaster going over the weeks and months, um, you're going to laugh a little bit, but one of the most important things that a town needs to do is payroll during that time, and that's this building. So if we can't do payroll, you know, and one of the things you have to do is take care of all the public safety and public works employees' families so the workers can do their job. If they don't worry about their families, their families are safe, everything's going on as best as it can, then workers come to work and do a good job in an emergency, which is what they're trained to do. But if you look at any of the natural disasters like New Orleans, uh, what didn't happen was that part. And people stopped coming to work, they started taking care of their families, which is understandable. Um, so you really want to make sure payroll you know, is kind of one of the basics, and that works. So we're working out what needs to keep happening in this building, but at a minimum, I would say payroll and um, you know, the health department would be on that list. That's like a truck. And then uh, and the, and the truck. And I'm not going to go over FY16. You can just see a lot was moved to either out or out or was one case to leave it. Let's see if there's anything really interesting. Um, the rec department and the athletic department cut together and uh, tried a new method out on maintaining the turf down at the high school, and it was fantastically successful. So they've moved out the need to replace the turf fields by two years, and they probably can move them out more than that by two years for now. And that was a million dollar expense we were looking at in the near term that's now not in the near term. So that's, I'm very happy about that. That's really the biggest change. In the Water Enterprise Fund, there's going to be an article requesting some debt authorization. We were able to secure a four million and twelve thousand dollar interest-free loan from the MWRA. We didn't expect that they would give us more than a million. So that three million interest-free is a big savings in the budget, and it allows us to speed up a second part of the water main improvements. Probably to be able to be bid this year, it may or may not. It probably won't hit the budget this year. But if we can bid it this year, if we have the debt authorization, and we can uh, issue the debt, and I'll go over that later, later with the library, um, it'll be paid in FY16. And then we, as a result of not spending money uh, in FY15, for some other reasons I'll show you, we want to move the Larch Lane project up from 16 to 15. Okay. Do you want me to go over all the articles before you vote, or do you want to vote them? And assign them one at a time, which is better. I think one at a time actually kind of makes It's a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any questions or comments on this? So you said, um, I'm sorry, Tom Meeting, um, the school department is going to come in with tell us what that school technology line is. Yeah, um, they, you know, John, John knows you're voting tonight, and I did talk to him today. I really should have reminded him, but I didn't. Um, the purpose for their larger scale things, if you remember last January, they needed 200,000 for the park assessment technology. Uh, this has more to do with their network, but beyond that, I, I really can't say. It's money they would have received uh, next July, they just needed sooner if, if the budget had gone as planned. Is that for both of those line items or just the technology? Just the 75,000 okay. for school technology. It might have something to do with the new testing. I don't have. think so. No? no, they got that money uh, last year. Yeah, I really don't know. If, if you're not comfortable, you can set that number aside and vote on it again. But you're not scheduled to meet until the floor of town meeting. So whatever you're most comfortable with. 
it's not typical to ask you to vote on something we don't know a lot. I understand that. And these are budget additions, right? They just come out of. Well, they're changes. They're, okay. Most of them are moved. They, some of them are new, but most of them are not new. They're just moved around. The technology has moved up, you know, a year. And then. So is that a new project, the Parker Multipurpose Room Repairs? That is new. That's brand that's new. Brand that's, new. That's, that's a neat. Like, that's a big number. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're having some problems. I know some of it's leakage up there. Uh, they're having some real facilities issues. But, you know, feel free. I'll post you the night of the 29th if you're not comfortable in anything and make sure you have all the information you need at that point. But, just to be fair, um, if you don't vote on it tonight, it goes in the warrant. It's not voted on. I'm good either way. It also raises the question of um, the timing of the vote, the Bill Brown question. Yeah. No, it doesn't. That's one. fine. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> New Town Council, he's disposed of Mr. Brown in that regard. Oh, excellent. <laughs> in that regard. <laughs> how does an item like that, how does that make its way to these articles? Does Which one? The, that 75 grand for school technology. Does John come over and say, hey, do you want to roll 75 grand? John just asked me. Yeah, I had actually misunderstood what he asked, and I bumped the 75 to 100 next year because I thought that's what he meant. But when he saw it, he said, "No, I need 75 this year." I said, "Okay, make sure you write me a memo." And then I just never thought to ask him again. So we would vote the article except for that piece, or we would hold off on voting the article. I would suggest you vote as much as you're comfortable voting. Yeah. If you okay. want to omit something, that's certainly your right. Yeah. Um, I, it's helpful to town meeting whatever you do and then that can be put in writing. We don't have any information on what it is. No, so I think there's going to be like a, big number yeah, a lot of right, we'll just go on. <coughs> on debate on town meeting floor. <clears throat> so if you, um, you want to just make a motion to exclude that single item, we'll figure out the totals and all that later. Again, this is just a capital plan. All right. Yeah. So three, yeah. we probably want. To. Yeah, it might be an advantage to, to voting it in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we have questions yeah. about it, not actually mm -hmm. authorize it in that last piece, and have yeah. to not vote on it mm -hmm. until the day of town meeting. Sounds okay. Yeah, I think probably what we want to do also is just make a request that when when people are requesting changes, that they kind of have at least some backup, um, yeah. or understand that our, our view is that we want approval. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept Article Three as written. Second. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Oh, it's time for you now. We're eight. We're eight. Zero. Should we just assign these as we're? Yes, that'd be the goal. Yeah, we're going to do it. So if you go to page seven, most uh, almost. A little more than halfway down, so it's going to come report. X now becomes eight. Does somebody want to volunteer to, to be the reader at that time? Sure. surplus to trade it in for a new piece. We bought the new piece. It did cost almost $9,500 more than we had. Um, they'll get somewhere between eight and 12000 when they sell it outright. So we just need to declare that surplus. And when it's sold, it will just go into free cash. Is this a, like a Craigslist kind of sale? Actually, I think it might be. I will tell you, it will get a lot of scrutiny. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments on Article 4? Or a motion on Article 4? Motion to accept Article 4 is right. Second? Second. Correct, second. Further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Opposed? 8 0 0. Want to take it? Sure. Five. Let's see. Article five is debt 
that was authorized for, in this case, two different times green repairs projects. But the debt was never issued. So it's unnecessary to keep that on the books and the rating agencies prefer you to take it off. So all this does is scrub that off the uh, authorized list because we never intend to issue it. We just don't need it. Just an estimate originally or? Yeah. I think part of it was we got some grant funding for some of the equipment that we thought we'd get, but we didn't risk it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea after this, so when this goes through, how much would be in this category of authorized but not borrowed? Um, let me think about it, and I'll answer you later. Okay. Not very much. Um, yeah, that the was library. The, real the library is a big one. Uh, West right. Street. Right. I think that's all authorized, but not that issue. So twenty-ish. Yes. Yep. Any questions, comments? Article 5. Nope. How about a motion? Motion to accept Article 5 as written. Second. Second. Further discussion? Not a hearing. All those in favor? Opposed? 800. Would you like this lovely one? I'll take it. Awesome. Article 6. Article 6 is debt that was not only authorized but issued. And it's three different projects on the top of page 9 where we didn't need all, quite all of what we borrowed. You can see the top one is quite funny. That's pretty close. <laughs> and that was Barrows, so that's not bad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no one could find This is before they come here. I want to see in the library project, right? Yeah. 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 Well, believe me, we, we keep track of all that stuff. <laughs> So a total of 69000 and change, if you add those three up, um, has already been issued. So we can't give the money back to the people who bought the bonds. What we can do and what we must do is transfer it to another debt authorization. Um, and there's lots of rules about what you can and can't do because they don't want you to be playing games. Yeah, each type of debt has a maximum maturity to it. Reading is usually half to one third of those maximums. We don't issue long, some municipalities do. But they want to make sure you don't authorize a lot of debts that's short and then sh shove it into a project that's really long and hurt the future taxpayers. Um, in this case, we want to add it to the West Street project. We still don't know what it's going to cost us. The state has gone up to bid but has not yet received bids. Uh, we will know by November town meeting, but not by September town meeting. So we have a million three authorized. This will increase the authorization by a tiny amount, and it's already borrowed, so we don't need to borrow. And then if we don't need it for West Street, we have the same kind of article in the future where we push it into something else. What's the, is the maturity, is it all short stuff? Um, let me think. No, Barrows was, well, 10 years and shorter, yes. So yeah. from 05, is the only good to pass the 65,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there is one other, uh, unexpended proceeds that we thought of putting in here, but last night the selectmen approved uh, some changes to the downtown landscaping, removing a tree and doing a little bit of work. So we're going to use those funds, because that's what it was for, the downtown improvements, and that's what we'd like to spend, to spend before. And once that's done, and if there's any left over, it'll come back in a future town meeting. I'm confused. So when you transfer the debt like this, so you don't have a specific project that you're spending on yet? Well, in this case, we want to transfer it to the West Street project. So right, it is a specific project. It's a specific project, but we're not spending any money on it yet. Uh, well, we will. authorize the debt. If, let's say, West Street comes in at a million three hundred and sixty-nine thousand, uh -huh. we have only authorized a million three. We won't need to worry about that because here's another sixty-nine thousand that can pay it. Mm -hmm. So we have cash in the bank. Well, that's what I mean. So it's literally. In the we meantime, need to pay some cash work. in the bank right. that you're paying right. debt. Okay, gotcha. And again, if we don't use it for this, you know, with this kind of behavior, it can go on forever. It's hard to spend things down perfectly, mm -hmm. as you can see from there. Yeah. So, and will you um, go buy some snacks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like lunch. When you do the debt for this project, Mm -hmm. You're going to tie it almost exactly to whatever the bid comes in at? So try to keep it um, clean? Or what the are you usually West Street doing? project's a little different where it's a state-run project. They're going out to bid. Bids come in in any way, shape, or form. We know the items we're responsible for. 
but depending on how someone bids and is the low bidder, the range that Reading could owe is quite large. So they could bid all the Reading stuff really high and everything on the state level really low and be the low bidder and we're out of luck. Okay. Or vice wow. versa. So it's very we have, It's not a percentage deal at certain items. Yeah. So we really have no idea. Um, Will you be bidding this before you really know when those bids are back? Uh, the states uh, already put it up to bid. They just haven't collected bids yet. I think they're going to award them. I think I heard. Well, they're going to know what they are October first. They may not award them for sixty to ninety days. There's no work going to happen until the spring at this point. There's no input on that at all, like you said. No, no input. No. The state will. Once the bids come in, the state will give us a bill. This is what you're going to owe. And even if it changes in the future, historically, they don't change that. Well, they always retain the right to if something really goes wrong. Yeah. But that's just like, this is what we told you you owe. But until the bids come in, they don't, they don't tell us they can't. Okay. Any other discussion on Article 6? How about a motion? Motion to accept Article 6 as written. Second. Second. Any other discussion, questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, zero, zero. Article is, 7 is a recommendation. So that's what we need to say, Article 6. All right, Kurt's got it. Seven. Morris, I'm just getting so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the water debt that we want to authorize. Let me just take you through this because that's the fastest way. Um, we have four phases identified. You can see the cost estimates on the top of page 10. Um, phase 1 is 7.512 million for what that's worth. There's the list of debt payments. We already have borrowed 4.012 million of that. So the remaining, if this article is passed, there will be 3.5 million of debt authorized that should be borrowed uh, when we borrow from the library. The actual request you see the second paragraph under those charts. Um, we're requesting kind of an odd amount of 2.512 million because of that odd MWRA loan we got that at $12,000. Um, I might have just borrowed the four million, but the engineers were instructed to borrow as much as possible for no interest, so they did. <laughs> four million and 12,000, good for them. You know, they, they really, it's the right thing. Um, where this is a whole series of projects that is gonna last many years, I'm not real wrapped up and concerned about what the estimates are going to be or when they're perceived. We're going to be rolling money forever, for 25 years into these projects. So I, I can't tell you, you know, there's a $4 million estimate on the remaining part of phase one. I don't know. The bid's going to be what's going to be. Yeah, exactly. So this, this additional 2.512 authorization would allow us to borrow $3.5 million uh, on January or uh, February 1st next year. And this, again, this just authorizes the debt. If we're going to actually borrow it, you'll see a financial plan in November that explains that. I don't, again, I don't believe it. We'll get the uh, FY15 budget, but we still want to show you that. Further discussion? All right, we have a motion Article 7, please. I make a motion to accept Article 7 as written. Second, please. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? 8 0 0. I would like this one. The goal will be everybody can get one. One plus. That's me. He likes water. I know it sounds like a dumb question. What do you do? You just get it. Obviously, my first town meeting. So, you just get you out the ice bucket challenge? Yes. I, 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 I thought that was happening tonight, actually. The, uh, yes. Buckets outside. Well, so um, you actually step in a bucket. Oh, good. All right. So, um, you literally walk up and just say, on this date, um, voted on whatever the date is, be zero zero to accept. Okay. In fact, you can do better. better. So, we can just right this for us. Is that is, all right. Notes. Notes. Bob has made this kind of the idiot's guide to the to town meeting. Perfect for me. I was going to say. It's just for the finance of the meeting. The mark of the board. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's from no ad living. Okay. I'll remember that. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Article 8. Article 8 is where the money gets spent. So. I think one, um, this project too, this could change, right, depending on what North Reading 
if they won't no, be with that, us? No, that shouldn't make any difference. Some other stuff further out may make okay. a difference. No, this won't matter. Okay. We've balanced the budget. We're you know, doing some changes we normally wouldn't do in November, but we may as well do it now. Um, we don't need $25,000 of work to come insurance premium. You know, the price came in very favorably. There's the 266000 capital that I already discussed. Uh, because the West Street project has been delayed, we had budgeted for uh, 390000 in the current year. We're clearly not going to need three fifty. I don't think we'll probably need any. But there's a chance we may need to do some kind of temporary borrowing if the project keeps getting delayed. So I've left 40000 in the project. But there's how you fund the capital right there. It makes sense you know, by the old 5% rule to try to spend as much of that capital as, as possible. Uh, last April, I remember at annual town meeting, I mentioned we had just gotten notice from the Essex North <coughs> merged to agricultural vocational school, and here's the 80000 we need. Um, there's the 9500 going back into FinCon Reserve that you spent on June 30th or thereabouts um, to advance the sale of the truck. Um, one of the main reasons this town meeting is called is the next one, 100000 in legal expenses. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. And then 15000 we need a little more money in PC insurance premiums, so we saved in one and we're paying a little bit more out of the other. Um, the legal expenses is this uh, obviously a limited amount I can say, but the high school is still in litigation, the construction of the high school is still in litigation eight years later. Uh, with TLT, the main contractor. Um, there is a, a, a pot of money, I'll just say it's less than a million dollars, that's still available to settle all outstanding claims. Uh, we have been paying legal bills from that fund for a while as the arguments continue. Um, a different creditor for TLT uh, filed a motion formally uh, such that town council has advised us we should not be spending money from that fund anymore because someone else has attached to it. So to the extent TLT would get any money from that, the creditor is not going to get it. So we shouldn't be, it would be an act of bad faith if we started paying legal bills out of a fund that someone else has the right to. So it's money that the town was going to pay one way or the other. I can't tell you how the litigation is going to come out or even when it's going to be solved. But at some point at the very end, there'll be an accounting for all this and will have paid for some litigation and some legal fees uh, through the general fund instead of the construction fund. So I must have misremembered, you know, what was it that we settled? Oh, we settled so some, some I small that portions was of it. No. Just a little part. That was, uh, yeah, there was a was small, a less than $100,000 settlement with a third party. Yeah, but I thought that was worth it. So no. this million dollars is the there's less than that left on the fund, the and this claims more than that, obviously, or we would have been all set. Uh, and, and the money that's in that fund is money that was already approved and borrowed, so there's mm -hmm. cash in the bank. Yeah. If for some reason a settlement or a, a judgment is awarded higher than that, we have to find the money. That's what we don't have. So that's a future discussion. But again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We just need to pay legal bills a different way. Mm -hmm. And this hundred thousand will more than do that. And the reason we had to have the town meeting is the town's legal budget just could not simply have even lasted until November. There's just not that kind of money around, depending on the pace of the litigation. Um, you know, we just couldn't last until November, so it's a good reason to have the town meeting. Um, what's the review process for? <clears throat> How much we're spending on the litigation and timelines and expected so, outcomes. It's all school committee executive session stuff. So you, you might talk to the chair if you ever want to get invited to one of them. It would be really interesting to see how much we spent. And I suspect that's a number they know. Yes, or, or they could get yeah. uh, fairly quickly. Yeah, like you said, it, there's got to be an expected outcome, you'd think, right? Like they can, at this point, it's, it's so developed, you'd say, it's likely going to be this. Yeah, and that's definitely all executive <coughs> session. Yeah, I think that would be interesting to okay. inquire about. The, uh, the last item is sort of some one-time things from DPW, and I just got another one yesterday, but I said it's too late. We'll do that in November. 
Um, we had some lightning strikes, I think it was on July 1st or July 2nd, and $18,000 worth of damage to some traffic controls. And then, um, believe it or not, and there's a memo in here about emergency stone. I was like, how can you have a what does emergency stone even mean? But sure enough, they had some emergency stone they needed for $7,000. So the long and short of all this is more info. No, that's it. Well, there's a memo. There's, there's a memo from DPW about all this stuff. Uh, page 24 of tonight's packet. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the sidewalk log fuel. Oh, maybe I didn't put it in here. I will uh, get it. To you. Yeah, I've got lots of emails described as well. Yeah, I didn't put it. In. Emergency stone is obviously different from regular stone. Right? <laughs> it's a lot more expensive. Very different. You need to in a hurry for one thing. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, again, I think it would be worth putting in a request when, when someone's needing an emergency transfer. Really and they gave me is. stuff. I just didn't mm -hmm. put it in the packet. I just forgot that. I thought it was with the other thing. Um, the way this 120000 is paid for, as proposed, most of it's paid by extra state aid that happened already. Um, and we need to then find 43,000 of something else since we can't use free cash. Um, to use an informal number, our excise tax payments for last year came in hundreds of thousands, too high. <laughs> too high, too high. Highly yes. budgeted. <laughs> so asking for another 43,000 is, is uh, quite reasonable uh, given that background. So it should be. So is that how much higher the state aid? Yes, that's the exact amount yeah. higher. Um, and we estimated very low, we thought. Mm -hmm. And they saw us and said, yeah, we we, we can do that. <laughs> the topic for September yeah. is financial forum. Yes. Yeah, I um, in the water fund, there's nothing to do in sewer, but in water, um, you can see we're asking to move Lark's Lane up a year. And uh, because we have not yet borrowed for this water main stuff, other than the interest-free loan, and we expected to borrow uh, sooner and pay interest, we easily have 120,000 already from the budget as debt. So it's just a transfer of debt to a capital project, um, and that allows the FY16 rates to be you know, 120,000 dollars less. Yeah, so that, that's a that's a project. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So if there's items you want to take out of that list um, in your motion, you should just say so, you know, excluding A, B, C, D, whatever it is, and I'll refigure the program. Um, so obviously the school technology is the one that we want to talk about first. How do people feel about that? Is that something we should exclude? And then what we would do, I guess, is meet at 7 o'clock yeah. on the 29th. So in advance of the meeting, we'll have a quick session, hit this, and if there's anything else, hopefully not. And then we'll add that to And, and then uh, the way it, it worked once in the past, I'll certainly leave it up to the superintendent. Um, he can explain what it is, or he can withdraw the request. We did that at the town site once, where we didn't have enough information for income satisfaction. It's going back a ways. And um, you know, you've effectively excluded something from from a list, there's no reason it then has to be listed as a request, so we just withdrew it. So I'll start to give John whatever option he wants. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the need for him to supply us with information yeah. before yeah. we get there as opposed to joining us at 7. Oh, um, the well, partner was until November. Right. Yeah, so that's right. Right. Yeah. yeah, and they know they need to explain that one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I couldn't tell you enough about that one. I know some of them. Yeah. Do you want to do the same with the emergency stone? Yeah, you can certainly do it. If you give me two minutes, I'll run down and print out an email. But okay. yeah, it's we can certainly put that off till November. Well, the emergency stone. I, mean, I guess I, I would look at the two different. We have the answer for the emergency stone if we feel like we need to run and get it. But the the seventy five thousand, at the very least, we don't want to set a precedent that. Accept or you know, we're going to vote on something we don't have information on. Yeah, I think you should treat them the same myself, but I, I'm willing to run down the hall and get you something. But I also don't mind waiting. Uh, we are, we're, we already paid for it, it doesn't matter. 
at some point we're going to meet the seven thousand. It was a real emergency. It was so a real you emergency. would have had a FinCom reserve fund transfer, mm -hmm. right? So their budget can absorb this for a period of time. I, I wouldn't worry about it. So you want to take them both out at this point? I think you should treat them the same unless I go get you evidence because you don't have it right now. I think that the fairness issues are going to become more important. So I yeah. agree with that. I guess excluding those symptoms. Sure, motion to approve uh, Article 8 as amended. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Zero, zero, zero. Those two excluded. Uh, just a quick operating procedure. Let's assume that. We then get the information, we take our vote right before town meeting, let's assume mm -hmm. that it passes, and we'd indicate that there are actually two separate votes that were taken. Yeah. Okay. All right, if you get information, you can send that out via email. Yeah, I'll right. send you one. Well, I'll wait for John to answer. Yeah. All right, who would like the first part of this? Yeah, I'll take the first part. Yeah, who does not have it? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Bylaws. Hey, we can vote this next one. Right? Sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that may be. Yeah, and uh, I think that's in time for print, actually. Yeah, so we can do that. Yeah, that's a good point. So, if John, we get us some info yeah. and we'll just get us some off. Okay, that's good. I guess yeah. if I call from right, we can come down with it, but no, no, I, I just forgot to ask. I forgot to ask one of them. It's not usual to have a September town meeting. Yeah. Um, the next couple of articles are bylaws and zoning changes that you don't want to have anything to do with. So that does bring us into Article 14 and 15, which is income as oversight. Um, Mark explained them well. I wrote up um, today this draft background, so I certainly want your help. If you look at page 20 for the draft background on Article 14, for instance. <coughs> Um, and an important thing to make very clear is right now FinCom has the authority to investigate the town government and the school department, period. You do not have any authority to investigate the like department. And the reason is because the way the charter is written and the way the bylaws are written restrict your activities to bodies that go through the budget process at town meeting. RMLD does not do that, so you have no say over that. This article instructs you to look at the books of any and all of these entities, including the power and which you don't have permission to otherwise. Uh, as Mark explained, the next article fixes that deficiency, if you think it is one, and includes RMLD in the future. Uh, so who does plan to have authority? Um, RMLD does. Oh, that's outside. Right. Okay, that was yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So no town involved. It, it is are these words strictly accurate? It's striking me that these are actually Which words. The, the words. The background certainly aren't. I made those up. Well, where it says <laughs> they have no authority. Um, I think that's correct. Is it is it clear or is it no? That's, is, that's clear. their interpretation. There's no authority. Uh, it says any town board, committee, commission, or department. That's the they are not considered any of those because they do not flow through town meeting by our charter. Well, first of all, you're looking at the, if you're looking at the next article, the mold is, is new language that's suggesting the cross out is old language or old, if that's what you're looking right. at. Right. The new language would then include them. I thought that the board committee commissioner department was part of the old language, or no. not of this. The official body is the old language, and they're not an official body because that's the town meeting definition. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So Got it. Right. Some of the language in Article uh, 15 was a little confusing with use of may and shall, and you know when. Oh, yeah, let when, me explain that. Yeah. Um, there's, I guess, a couple circumstances. If if this article is approved exactly as written, FinCom may at any time investigate anyone they want. That's mm -hmm. your choice. Mm -hmm. If a hundred residents or inhabitants of the town would get together. Four town meeting votes either way, 
they can insist that you do it even mm -hmm. if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So that's the the may is your choice, but prompt shall promptly or may promptly or promptly do it better is you must. The other part that is important here is that we may need additional resources to do what's being requested. I'm just going to ask as opposed to kind of using internal expertise by itself in our own time. But no, I got right yeah. and, and, and there probably is great value in having a third party um, who specializes in this kind of activity doing it as opposed to you know, a town body. Um, in order for that to happen, there's another process that has to approve any money getting spent. And as in the current charter, it's um, I believe the moderator, moderator is kind of the, the single person who has that. As proposed in here, that would change to the FinCom Appointment Committee, which is three people. It's still the moderator, it's the chairman of the board of the selectmen, and it's the chairman of FinCom. Those are the three people that would be involved in that discussion. And they have to approve any cash expenditure. Oh, just those three? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. It, it still would have to be approved by a majority vote of FinCom, but those three allow you to have that vote mm -hmm. if two out of the three agree. Mm -hmm. And actually, you have to spend town money. Right? Mm -hmm. You have your reserve fund to spend. Right. May have, or request for more. Sure. Yeah. So there, there, are, there are two things specifically going on. Before being more specific, more of a kind of a cleanup and a change. So 14 is, is very specific in saying that um, because RMLD today is not included in the groups that we can look at, this is a specific request to in fact add them and look, look at them and, and others. Uh, but this is adding kind of RMLD to the, to, the, to the group of three, and that would be kind of all town bodies, I guess, that and one of the reasons you need to understand there's a difference, some of it is strategic, but some of it is practical. If Article 15 is approved, you cannot investigate until the AG is done with this bylaw review, which is going to be a couple of months. So that's the main reason if you look for Article 14, which is as soon as town meeting is done, off you go. And is that the only thing that sparked this, I guess 14 and 15, is just the bylaw review that is noted, here's an overlook, or is there a reason? Well, I guess there's also that we should be looking, right? Is there right. was there an incident that sparked? Well, this? well, there's, I'll, I'll tell you, but there was an incident. Um, if you don't know, um, the other thought was I don't know how to assess all this. Either one of these could pass or fail. I don't know. Um, the thinking was if town meeting does not want to have broad authority for FinCom in 15, they may still be interested in you doing a certain task that's identified to. So that's another reason to have two, two paths. Now I, I don't know why you would be, I don't know, I don't know why you would be opposed to 14 and support of a 15. That doesn't make logical sense. But again, some of might. Um, the um, the discussion point, which was identified uh, in the past, and I don't want to say a lot because this is really the town accountant's jurisdiction, and she's going to make a full report as much as she can in October to the selectmen, but. A series of anonymous letters were received by me and passed along to her. Um, she did some background work and found there was something to investigate or whatever the term might be. So she, um, and, and they were concerning uh, sales of vehicles, procurement issues. Um, the light department sold three vehicles, um, presumably which are declared a surplus, for about $300. And the first anonymous letter I got um, said the value should have been closer to $30,000. And this person would have gladly paid close to $30,000 for what that's worth. Um, the long and short of it is she's got independent evaluations of the equipment and she believes it should have been closer to something like $30,000 or certainly higher than $300,000. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth between the town accountant, the RMLD staff, the RMLD board. I would characterize it as a lot of friction and a lot of resistance on the commissioner's part. Um, they did not believe the town accountant had any right to stick her nose into this. Let alone you. Uh, and that, you know, got people thinking in a review. And, and again, she's going to come up with a final conclusion. So I don't want to state what that is. But I will say the town council took a hard look at all of our bylaws and charters. And he was horrified at some point. He found me meeting right now with the signed by law group. Um, and the bottom line is, if, if those of you that remember 
15-ish years ago. There was a problem at the Light Department. An article came out of the RMLD. Commissioners went to town meeting, was passed. And everyone therefore thought there was a lot of oversight. That the town accountant had oversight, town meeting had oversight, and FinCom had oversight. Um, the RMLD Board of Commissioners never adopted the article that was passed by town meeting, so the effect had no change at all. We just found that out in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. So legally, um, the thing that was supposedly thought to be fixed 15 years ago was not changed. So, so they have to adopt this one too? <laughs> Well, so this only takes care of the FinCom piece. There's another issue which you're going to see in the charter, and I don't know where that's going to fall out. I have no idea. But it's going to be a special town meeting the first week of January to discuss the charter, and there's going to be a lot of discussion between now and then of what to do with RMLD in or out of the charter. They can just be out of the charter completely, or they can have language in there that does what a past town meeting, I believe, thought it did. And I really don't have an opinion. That said, it, that's it, the background. Yeah, but it is. I mean, it, it is owned, if you will, by the town. We, we, they're certainly our liability, and they certainly have a substantial base of assets. So, um, yeah, I think part of the issue here is that there is no kind of uh, oversight or investigative activity. There were some questionable activities that took place, um, and that's going to raise the specter of, you know, hey, this. Really should be something that, that FinCom is taking a look at. FinCom is a designated body to do this for the schools in the town. Um, and so, in order to make it happen, even for the schools in the town, by the bylaw today, it has to go through town meeting. So, that's what 14 is about. Also, note on 14, they're asking for a report um, for the November town meeting, which is right. which really, is really mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. um, I attended the Board of Selectmen's meeting last night to kind of get a, a flavor of what. Why for that time frame, um, and obviously the, the feeling is that this should happen kind of immediately, get it started. Uh, I don't think that they believe it necessarily would be completed in that time frame, but they certainly would like to see it moving ahead and have it, uh, you know, a pretty clear direction. And if there are any early findings, that's fine. Uh, but they expect a report to come from a two-town meeting. That's the intent of 14. And I can speak comfortably about the town side that I know well. Um, when I asked the DPW director when we got wind of this, it, it had some factual basis. Um, and, and the point I should have also added, which is quite important, is it was an RMLD employee that bought the equipment. I forgot that. It's kind of assumed you'd know that. Mm -hmm. I asked the DPW director, who are the ones that sell most of the equipment around here, do we do that? Do employees buy it? He says, no. Well, it turns out, in fact, we do and have for many, many years. Um, we. One of the differences, we put it on the website. So I found it on the website. I looked at all the past transactions. And occasionally, the workers are buying stuff. Occasionally, they're not the high bid. Um, there's some legal differences between the town and the light department I won't get into. But on the town side, there's forms we need to file if we're going to bid on stuff like that with the State Ethics Commission. Um, and the reason you need to investigate us is because last spring, a buyer forgot to file that for the first time that we can tell in five or 10 years. So I don't know what the remedy for that is. Um, he was the high bid of five bidders in the, R in the RMLD case. There were no other bidders. There was one bidder that employed. So I mean, we'll come to your own conclusion. But I, I do suggest you look broadly at all of us. It's not fair to just pick one. You can prioritize one, but you gotta look at them all. We have pretty good documentation and records. You won't find much to do in the school department because they don't sell schools very often. Um, this, you know, most of their equipment that's disposed of goes through DPW, so it's just not a lot there. Um, but we are, I, I am not allowed, nor are the selectmen allowed to unilaterally forbid employees from purchasing or bidding on equipment. Um, that's a collective bargaining issue. Uh, what I've instructed us to do is, and, and we normally do, is trade it in when possible, such as the one you know about. And there is a firm in Reading that specializes in disposing of things. And I said, let's just put it in their hands. Let them sell it and get bids. And if the employees are high bids buying from a third party, that's OK. I don't want to be part of that anymore. I didn't know. I, I don't think it looks good. Um, there's too many questions that can be asked uh, when you have mechanics bidding on stuff that they used to work on. You know, in the free market, let it happen. But I'm just not real comfortable with that. And I'm not saying anything, anyone did anything wrong. 
but as you know from ethics, it's not it's not the ethical violation, it's the appearance for what might have been an ethical violation that's just as serious. So that's why you really need to look at, at all of us. Oh, in terms of all of us, would, um, and, and clarify for me, Reading Ice Arena Authority, is that a different entity or is that, it's should that be in question. all of us? No, they're, they're not. Is there not, the entity uh, that you see as big cash that, that doesn't anymore? There's someone that Just leases leases the ICE Arena. They're a private party, not part of the government or the light department owned by Reading. Nothing to do with it. We own the asset. We own the ICE rink. We own the ICE rink. But they're an independent authority. We have a liability for the ICE rink? As an asset, as opposed to it's not one of our departments in any sense. And then we just lease it. And we just lease it. They have a, I can't remember, 10-year lease. Hmm. What do you think about that? We have no authority. You have, you have, there's nothing to look at. I mean, I've looked at their books, and you know, let's talk about RCTV. It's not that different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's example. cable money coming in from ratepayers. It's not taxes, it has nothing to do with us. It's the same people, and it's similar money, as Bill Brown would say, it's coming out of the same pants. Um, but how they choose to spend the money is none of our businesses, or at least not your business. It might be a little bit of mine, because the money passes through the town manager's office before it's paid out to them. So, um, you know, the ICE Arena in the past has from time to time uh, declared a surplus and given the town money. For a while it was consistent. For a while it was consistent, 100000 yeah. more or less. Yeah, you kind of it. And, um, you know, we had a long discussion last summer, a year ago, with them. Um, um, very serious discussions, including with Nelson Burbank. And it was very clear that the language is perfectly clear that that's optional at their choice. And really, we were wrong to budget it, I think, in retrospect, seeing the actual language in the lease. Even if they promised it to us. So when their lease is up, it could just be a discussion topic? It could be. Is that how that works? Yeah. At least just start another nine years or something, yeah. though. So just got my yeah. yeah. So it's they may right. still well pay us, but we're just not going to expect it. If it comes in, it comes in. And to be done well, done well by we, We've done very well. And to be completely candid and clear, uh, when that was started, mostly by Mr. Burbank's generosity, mm -hmm. he wanted to make sure it wasn't a white elephant for the town and that it stood in its own. And it was never meant to be, not to put too many animals in the story, a cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> But it was supposed to take care of itself. It was supposed to set up reserve funds, take care of its own capital, and never be a burden on the town. And so when they stopped paying the town, it's because they had capital needs. They had some Title IX things, some facilities work to do. They just bought or in the process of buying electric Zamboni. So it's it's not like you know they're paying someone a lot of money. They're doing things that we should want them to do. To right, and so that was increasing the ass our asset. Yeah, exactly. They're protecting our asset. We should like them. So it would be hard to weasel any more money out of Under the current lease, you can't weasel any more money out of it. Right, I was just standing with the animal now. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, mean, I think that the focus here. You got a lot of cargo, though. I did. I was for the moment to burn out the I think the, the, the goal here and the discussion here is, look, there are you know, three, four very substantial activities, if you will, ongoing activities of the town, the schools, our MLT, and then there are project activities, which are building related typically. The library obviously is the first and kind of on the list, but there you know, probably will be others that come down the pike also. And FinCom has two roles in the charter, and, and I don't anticipate them changing that in the charter, but one is kind of to review the fiscal matters and make sure everything seems appropriate. Um, but the other is investigative. And my time in the town, I don't think that they've used that power. They may have used it 15 years ago at the light department. I don't know, because I was on FinCom at the time. But it had just happened before. So I don't think so, but I wouldn't swear to it. Yeah, but it, 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 you know, it seems appropriate. I think one of the things that we should talk about is that Let's assume that this comes down the pike. How will we manage it? What do we do specifically? Um, and you know, again, our role is kind of managing that process. And I don't anticipate that anyone here is going to do forensic accounting of anybody's books. If if the late department comes off the charter, do you think that it's a possibility? Do sure. 
then we would have no oversight because they're not. I don't think that would change the language of the bylaw because we still own them. It would not okay. in the charter. We still own them. Uh, and just to be clear, um, both the town account and I especially spend some portion of our waking lives going over all the bills. She goes over a lot more than I do. Um, but we have active oversight in that sense. Whether or not we have any authority, I don't know. But you know, we're always looking over things. Um, we feel that that's our responsibility, however things are worded in legal documents, because we own them. Um, there was an issue several years ago where one of their creditors was about to file bankruptcy. Because of my prior line of work, I had a pretty good idea what was going on. I jumped in a car, drove down there, and luckily um, someone had taken some very good action based on a prior visit I had, and they protected themselves from a $60 million loss because we had some good insight. If they lost $60 million, either the ratepayers would pay it or the taxpayers would pay it. It would be very ugly. Um, it is very much a liability for the town, as well as this very strong asset that performs fantastic. But we are very different from the other three towns that are clients. Well, Wilmington um, uses 60% of the power, I think, and so they believe they should have 60% of all benefits, but they take no risk. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's a big difference when you own them versus you're, you know, we're a smaller customer. is probably a, a bigger issue at some point. These are very narrow and very specific. Um, you know, I don't think you should worry about whatever might happen with the charter or not. We'll get to that, certainly. Okay. I think part of what would be involved in 14, if you look at the way it's written, just investigated once the books, accounts, records, and management. So part of it, you know, there, there is a, an independent auditor that they hire. And the audit committee, I think, is meeting first week in October. Yeah, so. to review, to, to hear from the audit in terms of what that was. Um, but in terms of kind of other third parties uh, representing the town, that's us. Right. So I think that, that's kind of you know, my view is that that is what we should be doing. Part of it is going to relate to processes as well as kind of more just the forensic accounting kind of stuff. And it probably involves looking at how this is done with other municipal light departments mm -hmm. and other things just to understand you know are, where where are we in the in the mix here what makes sense and what doesn't so i think i just you know quick thought on it i thought maybe what we would end up doing is if this happens um, we probably have some kind of a subcommittee that we form or that would kind of be most involved um, determine what kinds of activities we need what help we need to do it where, where the town can help where outside resources are required get an idea on what that cost would be mm -hmm. to do it and then uh, go essentially to the uh, FinCon appointment committee, I guess, for, for authority to get that going. Um, I think the selectmen are very interested in making it happen. Their vote on this last night was 500. Um, I don't you know, I haven't spoken with the moderator, I don't know kind of where, where his head is at. But um, in my view, it's, uh, I think it's an important thing to do, and I think we need to think about how how we're going to do it, what we're going to do. Oh, I'm wondering about the November 10th deadline and exactly what they expected by November 10th because, I mean, the work you've described, that might get done by November 10th, but I don't think you get the whole investigation done by November 10th. Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree. And we had a, a brief discussion. I don't think that they expect it to be completed. I think that they would expect an action plan, certainly, and I think it's something they started. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe early activities are started at that point, even if it's reviewing how it's done in other towns, hiring a forensic auditing firm, um, you know, whatever kind of action steps are appropriate. Yeah, but no way can, you know, in the language, The language doesn't, I don't think the language says that they just want to Status. Actions, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a status. It's, a, it's asking for a report. Mm -hmm. we, we were pretty specific on that discussion. That yeah. they, they want a report and not a final report. The, I understand the language of the article does suggest um, such report. Per, yeah, such such, report. Yeah. The investigation of the books, accounts, records, and management to a place such expert and other assistance as may deem advisable for that purpose. 
So would it be possible to could we amend? No. No? No. We discussed this last night oh. actually, but the selectmen closed the warrant with this language. Oh. You can amend the town meeting floor. Okay. Can't do okay. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of discussion about the exact words and language, findings, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Where it's findings and recommendations added in there, it sounds more final mm -hmm. as opposed to a status report. Right. Um, right. And it says them. such report as though it's referring to everything. Yeah. Of the previous. I, I would say that until you get involved in it, you can't know how, how reasonable or unreasonable it is to hit whoever tenth. I don't know either. And if I did, I wouldn't. I shouldn't tell you. Um, I will suggest, though, that in terms of process, uh, you leave, uh, well, you can do whatever you like, but I'd rather be left out of it. I think the superintendent would very rather be left out of it. I won't speak for our MLD. Um, if you think of how we're set up, the town accountant is the best Switzerland you're going to find. But she is hired by the Board of Selectmen to report to the Board of Selectmen and to oversee both the schools and the town and the light department and whatever else goes on in the town. Um, so whether you want to include her in a working group or just get stuff from her, that's your call. But at a minimum, I'd say she's already done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. The work is tangible. You can see it. Mm -hmm. You should at least get it from her and make your own assessment of whether it's valuable or not. So don't, don't assume that you're starting from scratch and needing to do a lot of work. You just need to see what's been done and assess it in your own merits. But what happens if there is a mismatch in expectation? Between? Like with, that we're saying, hey, we, they're expecting one, one report back to the Board of Selectmen, and we're saying, hey, we don't know if we can do that. If, if it turns out we give one type of report and they want another, what's the... Well, it's 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 you, it's you a report to town meeting. Right. So it's up to town meeting to decide whether they're happy or unhappy with whatever it is you do. Right. So I mean, they're, they're yeah, I'm sure this will be discussed in more. September. Right. right. Yeah. So that's yeah. my point. So it's it's, 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 it's so very little... It sounds the like, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can and, and you know, and, and that's if, what the like if they're unhappy, of course we're going to... Either way, we're going to come back with them. So I'm not sure the language... And from what we discussed last night, it's it's certainly a possibility you'll say, well, we can't really complete much by November 10th, given of what we found and started, and that's your report to town meeting. Right, right. I don't see why town meetings going to have a problem with that. Mm. But that's that's a report. Right. Yeah, and I would say an, an action plan and the timeline to be produced for that time frame. Would sure. Be, He's probably one of the most important things to look at. <clears throat> but it, it, yeah. I think the reason they wanted it this way is because there's a goal to get to make it happen now, as opposed to well, let's you know, we'll form a committee and we'll talk about it and we'll see if there's a way to do it. Is there an issue that if we if, if this is if this is the language we adopt and um, we're not complete with the investigation by November 10th, that we no longer our authorization to conduct the investigation will end as of November 10th? No, no, no it's open ended. Okay. Um, the, the way this is presumed is under Article 2 in most town meetings, that's reports. So that's what it's effectively telling you is at November town meeting under Article 2, there will be a report by FinCom mm -hmm. on the findings to date. Um, this does not end your authorization on November 10th. It's just you will give an update on November 10th. You finish it whenever you finish it. And you may be asked in November 10th with an instructional motion to update the next town meeting if you don't conclude, for instance. <coughs> and this may get amended on town meeting floor. Who knows? But it has to be narrower, not broader than the intent. Any other thoughts on, on 14 first? Just in general, and I think one of the things we need to do is have a, a discussion on how we might how we might approach this, because it wouldn't surprise me if it came up on town meeting floor, the discussion of the date and the activity, and then saying, well, what can you really do? And we're not going to have a finished plan, but I think we ought to have an idea of how we can approach it. I'm not sure how much we'll know about how we'll approach it until we see what's already been done. I mean, I, I would think the action plan is we can't do anything until this is passed. If this is passed, our action plan is either to look at what Sharon's done so far and form a subcommittee or form a subcommittee and have them look at what's been done. But I'm not sure we can make much of an action plan until we, until we know more of the facts and circumstances and the extent of what work has been done so far. 
I was just looking at the calendar. She's scheduled to give her her final report, if you will, to the Board of Selectmen on October 14th, which is quite a ways from now. Um, part of the reason for that is it's her busiest part of the year where she's trying to close the books on last year. So the board didn't want to rush her uh, and keep her away from that. Where that's five weeks away, you know, assuming, let's just say, the town meeting approves us at the end of September, your question will be, do you want to wait another two weeks until she starts off the public process? She's been to the selectmen and already talked about this. So this is all public, but she hasn't given a final report. She's given the preliminary stuff, and that's all public. Um, and she can give you whatever's public or not public. You can ask for it. She'd be glad to give it to you, I'm sure. Um, the real question is, do you want to formally start something before October 12th, or do you want to wait? I don't, I don't care. Uh, but you're not going to be able to start much before October 12th, because there's a town meeting that's telling you what to do. Right, so, so it's only public record. Right? But you only have... I don't know, what's that? Six what's weeks, six? five, six weeks from September to November. And if you're going to give away the first two, you know, that's, that's a big part. So the only things that could be looked at in the first two would be the public information? Uh, no, you have the right to ask her anything she has. That's, we can ask. You can ask. Can she, you know, say no. Well, no, right. she, she should say yes because, she, well, like, it's a little tricky where it's the light department, I guess, because yeah. you don't have the right to do that, but I'd leave that up to the town council to answer that question. You can certainly find out all that she knows about the town and the schools. Go on and get started. My, my take on that, we talked a little bit about this last night, is that we're going to do a much better job one at a time as opposed to trying to get these yes. all together. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. There's a little here, yeah. a little there. And you know, given the focus of Article 14, it seems pretty clear that the RMLD is probably the place to start. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would be in favor of kind of focusing it that way. I mean the key dates are there's the audit report from RMLB, which is the fourth, fifth, or sixth, actually I thought the late last August was October, right, which is just a few days after the mm -hmm. town meeting. I'm sorry, what were those dates? Just checking out, I think I probably have it here. Uh, October second is the huh? uh, is the audit meeting. Is it an RMLD meeting or is it a broader public meeting? Uh, it is. The meeting's RMLD only. Yeah, I think we have. Town meeting saying, I can't remember what was on that. I think that the town audit committee members were invited. Okay. That's the second. And I'm sorry, you said the 12th is when? The 12th is when the selectmen will get a report. Uh, uh, 12th is Sunday, 13th is Columbus Day, so 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are a couple of tangible steps that we could that we could take. I think thinking about subcommittee to start of, of us. Uh, two is deciding what information we already know we want, so we know that Sharon's doing all this stuff, so that's great. Um, I don't know if did any of this go to town council. Is there any other stuff beyond what Sharon would be working on? No, not on that. Okay. Um, finding out what policies are done in other municipal authorities would be interesting. Uh, I don't know the first thing about who does forensic audits. But it might be worth pursuing a little bit. Some folks have done that before, um, and then kind of have that culminate right after the presentation of the select, and we could probably put together a pretty good plan and have some activity done for November 10th. I think part of it too is kind of what what are those findings? Though? I mean, the findings may be that there are a bunch of issues that probably should be explored. The findings may be I don't see much here. I think we should at least look to start putting together some I've heard comments, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so committee. Because otherwise it means waiting for a meeting or not on our part after yeah. even this is voted. Yeah. So it's losing. And when's our October meeting scheduled? I'm assuming it's the week of the 14th. Uh, I don't have it. I don't remember. I know that's weird. I can't. Yeah, it's not in the calendar. I think 
Well, maybe because there's a financial form tucked in there somewhere. It's possibly how we in October early. I think we still had a meeting because the form is scheduled for the 29th. I have, I have on my calendar for the 8th. I don't know if that and is accurate. That would be the uh, second Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's probably right. And then I have the, oh, this is the 29th of financial form. That's the financial form. Uh, what I will do, just to make sure everything is playing by the rules, um, I'll reflect the discussion tonight to town council. We know what Sharon has done to date, and I'll just ask him, is there any concern, based on no articles having passed, of her talking to you at this point? I don't want to answer that. I have an opinion, but I don't want to answer right. that. Right. And then if the answer is it's fine from town council, then a subcommittee can start talking right away. And if the answer is no, you can't do that because you have you guys have no right until after an article's passed, which could be the answer, then you can't talk to her before town council. Well, you have the right because she's the town council? No, because she's investigating the light department over which you have no authority. You know, you have a, no. And that's the subject matter of that. Which means you can investigate the town and the schools for us. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to you know, spend a week or two and then yeah. stop. Well, I something different. consider the source. What I'm saying here, there's not that much that's interesting that you're going to learn. Yeah, 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 that's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, trust me. Uh -huh. What's that guy say? Enron. No, this is a different one. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take a look at 14. Any, any other thoughts or comments? <clears throat> no. How about a motion 14? I'll make a motion to accept our 14 as written. Second. Discussion? Uh, hearing? All those in favor? Second. Yes, sir. Second. Okay. okay. So all those in favor? Opposed? Or 8 0. Or I think that that's mine. <laughs> the absent mind commander, too. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't work. I ended up absorbing those two, right? Okay, so I'm 15. And again, so the bold type is new. Mm -hmm. Correct. Cross outs or changes. In terms of wording, I know you said it was going to be reviewed by the Attorney General. Would they make any t tweaks if they felt the language needed to be adjusted at all? Or would they just up or down? Well, we had an interesting discussion about that just about an hour or two ago. Um, it depends who the Attorney General is and depends uh -huh. on the staff. Okay. Um, the styles are quite different, as mm -hmm. I learned earlier today. Mm -hmm. The current um, arrangement is you will get a letter back that suggests what should be changed, but they can't change anything. Town meeting has to do that. Mm -hmm. um, they could say no, they could say yes, and they could say yes, but. And the yes, but under the current attorney general is fairly common. I, maybe not common is not the right word, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Certainly to us and are signed by laws. And there's a caution in there about, I'm not going to say no, but you really want to run this section by town council. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so they won't wordsmith, they'll just give you some sort of direction and advice in that mm -hmm. sense. So for instance, in the animal control bylaw, and I haven't writ read the decision, I've only heard this, the suggestion was your appeals process is flawed, you need to have town council look at it. Okay. Hint, hint, hint. okay. And has so, town council already reviewed yeah. this, so. Okay. He's, he actually drafted the okay. for all these. Okay. Uh, question on, uh, Finance committee may call upon the assistance of any town official or employee. So, in the case of town or schools, the town is meant to be very broad, the broadest interpretation possible, including RMLD, town, school, municipal government, whatever. Any group. Yeah. And official is obviously volunteer, not just employee. Mm -hmm. We're all town officials. Huh. And you have liability. <laughs> <laughs> I like the hundred of others. I, I, I don't want a party of ten disgruntled folks like yeah. sent off some wild goose chases. That's in the charter now. Um, there were some things in there that weren't clear. Um, that I 
think that's one of the reasons why this was being requested to be modified to clarify. Right. The feeling initially that I heard was that only a vote of town meeting could authorize it, even though it had this hundred piece in it, um, because of some unclear language. Okay. So this is an attempt to make it crystal clear. Comments on the world. <laughs> How about a motion, Article 15? A motion to accept Article 15 is written. Second. Last chance on discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That's opposed. Eight zero zero. I don't think I've, I've signed up to read anything yet, so. Can I do this one? Sure. Great. Mark will have softened them up with the prior yeah. article. Yeah, the yeah, year will come back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Now let's, let's jump to 20. 25, I'll just point a couple things out. And this is kind of a combination of um, budget in the FY15 situation, it's in the warrant, but also looking at FY16. Um, there's the capital A circle that we're requesting, you know, perhaps modified. Uh, more importantly, I guess, the next column you can see, you're still 224,000 out of balance based on what we think revenues are and the 5%. I know there's been some appetite for a discussion about that 5% and making it a smaller number, which would make the deficit a little larger. But I just want to point that out. I don't know if there's anything in the capital plan we need to talk about because we already have. Um, on page 33, this is a picture of the debt service. And um, technically and, and formally, we, we still haven't figured this out and we didn't need to do it in order to close the warrant. Um, we know West Street has 390, we don't need 390, we need 40. So there's a 40 that's on this line that says, go back to page 33. There's a line that says approved but not issued, and that answers your question earlier. Um, that's that the town meeting has approved, but we haven't got around to issuing yet. So all that right there is the West Street, the 40, the 390, and so forth. Um, where is the library? And then the library is down below where it says 195 in the current year and then a million four mm -hmm. and annually after that. That's the library project that's approved but not yet issued. And the 195 is an estimate for this year. It might actually be zero depending on how you borrow. Um, so this is where the 350 of debt service goes down, but it might go back up if we need to borrow for the library now because um, we didn't know when we put the budget together what would happen um, and we still don't know what the timing of when debt will be issued so we don't know if there's any funds owed this year if we issue on February 1st there won't be so there's no budget in terms of a debt exclusion yet but we may need to change that I don't know in terms of going out for the library debt mm -hmm. you're envisioning that as four quarters this year um, I'll show you there's a, a separate handout that goes into a lot of detail and Karen's going to talk about the library um, I think we can skip over this, the water fund, it doesn't matter. Go to page 43, and this is um, just going to be good background for you as, as you go into a financial form. If you look at the column that says projected FY16, um, right now using a 3% operating budget, which you can see is lower than we've done in recent years, certainly and using a million and a half of free cash, we're still a million three too high. Um, which isn't terrible, but it's it's not great either. Um, if we put a three and a half percent number there, obviously that number gets worse. Uh, and again, that's using a million and a half of free cash. And I mentioned to you last time the driving force and why this looks different than it used to is health insurance has gone from six and a half percent to 14 percent as an estimated increase. And that's a lot of money. That's hundreds of thousands, uh, 750,000, something like that difference. So. Wow, oh, I have missed that. You might have missed the last one. Um, I didn't hear that either. That's, I didn't uh, hear health that. insurance, as an estimate in the budget, was 6.5% for next year through 
June, July, I guess. We hired a consultant. We're going out to bid in the fall. Um, we're meeting with all the unions, school, town, and light department. We have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, the consultant prepared us for 11 to 17 percent health insurance, even on a bid. And the 11 is a baseline cost, and there's another six due to federal mandates. Three to six is the federal mandate range right now. I had always known there was an eight to 11 percent run rate, and so when I budgeted six and a half, I didn't feel too bad about that. Figured, well, we're going out to bid, you know, we'll be able to hit that. What I did not understand and was shocked when I found out is that the eight to 11 does not include the three to six on top of it for federal mandates. So the minimum care. So you add those together and you get 11 to 17, right. Um, and you know, and there's renewals right now in the 20s, 20%. But I don't get so. that, you know, like the, the federal requirements. I mean, I'm sure the plan employees have now meets that federal requirement, doesn't it? Um, it's the federal requirements put on the healthcare industry to behave themselves, and they're passing along enormous costs to the consumers. So, you know, it's not it's not at all a pretty sight in the industry right now. Um, it's a mess. A this ways. this doesn't compare to the kind of rates that we've seen in the agency that I work for. The gig rates are increasing only by two percent in the last year. And that's because the legislature votes the money every year in the budget. We've talked a lot about that. Right. Their real run rate is a lot worse. Taxpayers are subsidizing that. Okay. So, so it's not a real run rate. The GIC, the state run, and we're looking at them as an option yeah. this fall. So you have to consider that. But we're we're, we're real concerned about okay, um, you know, this is being taken care of by other money. What if it wasn't? Right. We have to know what we're getting into. It's being held down here. The real price is here. Okay. Right. Are they going to stop when we join? Yeah. So, Not so risky. So that that is that's a big guess. point of discussion certainly. But. Yeah. Hey, we, we understand the facts as best we can. Right. We will evaluate them and we'll, we'll decide. You can't use that as a negotiation tool to oh, yeah. you know, say, hey, look, this is a, this is an option for us. We can go with this and it's 2%. So yeah. why, why are we in you know, some of these outrageous well, numbers? You know, it is. And many cities do that, especially some towns do that when they yeah. have acrimonious labor relationships. Yeah. We don't have one here, knock on wood. Um, we split at 71.29, so we're a little more concerned than the employees. Right. 71 to 29 is worth. Yeah. But the 29 is a much bigger percent of their pay. Oh, yeah. And, and on both, sure. management and labor. Sure. Um, so we work side by side. We understand that. We don't agree perfectly on everything. Right. Um, but it's very cohesive. And the group has been together in most cases for like 20 years. Um, but you were also there's there's no talking about negotiation with, you know, as you go up to bid for this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where the hammer will help. Yeah. And but the trouble is the GIC doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in when you can join. Uh, right. You are forced to join. Sure. Let's just pick a date: November first, October first. They don't even set their rates until eight months later. So you have no idea that's what you're right. getting into. It's the way it's run. You can't. No. And you have no idea what plans they might offer or what benefits sure. might be available. You have to join well in yeah. advance, so they, and they know change, and they do change the co-pays, and they, yeah, yeah it, that I mean that part of it has gotten worse over time, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So the only concern I've ever had is the fact it doesn't stand on its own two feet as an entity. Right. So I don't know. It's subsidized. I don't really know. The yeah, I don't understand that. Side. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's a new governor coming in, and that's been one reason described as why it's being subsidized. Who knows what the next governor? Will um, but that's, you know, the superintendent was right beside me when we both heard it. We both looked at each other. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, that's going to squeeze the next couple of years worth of budgets even yeah. worse than we oh, thought. Yeah. So when you get what is probably going to be some decent free cash news, keep that in the back of your mm -hmm. mind. Well, interesting. The change in the benefits number is roughly equal to the amount of free cash. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's scary. In the um, collective bargaining, does that determine, you've got the percentage split, does that determine deductibles and things like that? Yeah, so we, we negotiate the, the split technically, and we don't really negotiate the rest. That's set by the town manager. But as a practical matter, we discuss everything. 
I'm not going to post something. So they never agree to sign. Um, the, and timing uh, usually allows that. You know what I mean? That you. We it want. It seems like the timing would be a lot. The best. The best price is probably if we slow down, because the closer you are to when you want to join, the more information the actuaries have, mm -hmm. the better price you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right. the, op the opposite side of that is we all want to come as soon as we can, what it's going to cost. So we've talked a lot about that, and I think we're looking at a December bid, final bid, so that when we go into early January, when the selectmen and the school committee meet, we know. So it would be nice to know in October, but it's going to cost us too much to know in October. We might even push it into January and really have an interesting January. And we'll have to have a lot of discussions about that because we might be looking at plus or minus a million dollars. I thought we goes. didn't know until... January. Well, when we get a renewal, we don't know until the second week of February. So that's typical. Oh, because this is... But in this case, where we're going out to bid, and we've done it in the past, we've and known it's every earlier. three years? How every year. Every year? Well, we don't go out to bid every no. year. But so how often to bid? Uh, it, it's hard to answer. Oh. Uh, I would say if you did it more often than three years, you're going to hurt yourself because they're not going to care and bid. Uh, five years is probably about right. Oh. Ten years isn't terrible if you get in good service and good prices. And again, last year our rate was high, but we've had a really long run of really good rates. Mm -hmm. you know, no complaints from me, sir. The problem is a really good rate at 4% is more than your revenue. You know, and the 4 in the context of the national health industry is fantastic. In the case of our budget, it's horrible. So, I don't know what you can do. So I, I just thought you ought to get that picture in numbers, and there's a few pages before next September, uh, the 10th financial form. And the selectmen last night made it clear they want to the representatives from the legislature to bring more state aid. <laughs> so, we're in our little area right now. Yeah. Um, form. Financial form. Page 47. That's your last uh, agenda, just so you have it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I shared this by email, but mm -hmm. 48 and 49 is a summary of how the votes worked out. And I, I don't really remember if I shared this with you. Um, pages 50 and 51 are town only, and I want to emphasize, no school people. But the town management teams did the same exercise, but not from scratch. They took what was already chosen as topics by this financial forum, and they voted. So they had the same rules. They could pick three. Um, so the DH and an ADH, that's Department Head, Assistant Department Head, um, voted and I just thought it'd be interesting for you to see. We talked very briefly last night about it. Um, in concept, the department heads and assistant department heads ought to have a different view than the, than the public because they're the boots on the ground. Well, the real boots on the ground are the people doing more frontline work, but they certainly are much more familiar with what goes on in the town. And as an example, um, if you just look at the topic social services very broadly, uh, town government employees are much more aware of that than most residents who don't get services. The residents that do get services are intensely aware of it, but if you just took a sample of residents, you're going to find low knowledge and thus generally low interest in it. Not that they don't care, it's just they don't know. Whereas for the town employees, so many of us are involved, we have a much higher level of awareness of what goes on in this town. So I don't know that there's anything in there that's really startling. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of agreement that wasn't perfect agreement. And again, how many votes did you get? Uh, three. And not all of them used three. And the only department that was really low in representation that day was public safety. Only had one person there. It was the uh, executive officer for the police department. The one item that was sort of surprised on this that you know was thought of afterthought, which I wish at the financial form we could have had a discussion about was the whole routine and staff. Yeah. And I'll spend yeah. some time at this financial form to have that discussion. That's a tough issue. I mean you saw the budget I just showed you. Exactly. It's obviously important though. So 
so that's all I have in terms of past. Yeah. And now it's really a discussion of um, you know what you want to accomplish. I know Mark has a lot of thoughts, but I, I do want to say that I I have put off until tomorrow communicating with the legislators. I said I have to wait till the finance committee meets to give you an agenda. I really owe them something tomorrow. And I don't want to plan on them being there the whole night. Um, they're planning to get there at 7.30 with the specific things for them. We should give them an opportunity to leave. I don't want to keep them there for three hours. Well, I do, but I should say that I don't. <laughs> and they're all pretty good. Um, to reflect some of the discussion the selectmen had last night is they want to find out, basically, what are other towns and cities doing that we should consider doing that you find clever or useful? And how can you help us? What funds or what other resources are available that you know about that we may not know about? Um, and that doesn't always have to be money. It can just be uh, you know, resources that are available. There's you know, a whole range of sharing that goes on. And Reading generally thinks it knows what's going on, but we don't know that. So I, I've, I've talked to Senator Lewis probably more than the two representatives about this. And he has some very strong ideas that are priorities for his administration, if you will. Um, and the selectmen adopted some of the uh, policies that very few towns have done so far, which makes us eligible for some road money that's been funded now under the transportation bill. Um, and, and he was very happy we did that, because there's only three or four communities in the state that have done that so far. And that's essentially to promote pedestrian and bicycle uh, uses when we redesign our roads mm -hmm. and you get money for that as an assist if you put in a bike lane someone's going to pay you for it right. so there's millions of dollars at the state level and as is usually the case there's not a lot of takers right now we had a meeting this morning we talked about two projects that are already things we're going to do and we thought why don't we just ask for money um, you know there's a couple of pedestrian safety issues we should do and this would easily fall into that so what else is what else are we missing? We should ask these three. They're the three that should know. Let me tell you kind of what I was thinking, and then let's let's open it up. I think there, there are kind of three chunks. Um, one is certainly talking about the results of the uh, kind of how how to spend and you know, where the priorities are. And interestingly, we kind of have the the volunteer side of the of the town, although a limited number of people that were there last time, and then uh, some of the town departments. And yeah, you love schools. Yeah, I think if you had the school ones, we probably would see the kind of a little shift on some of that. But I think it's worth kind of going through those results. I had been thinking that a lot of our focus would be talking about ideas on uh, kind of sources of money, you know, other things that we can do, uh, and how that would come through. And then I think the third leg is input from the legislators. Maybe the question is, what should what should be first, second, and third? I think the the uses needs to come before the kind of the sources and ideas. Um, but maybe the input from the legislators comes first. And that lets them kind of talk. Maybe we give them some structured ideas that we'd ask them to talk about. So, you know, number one obviously has to be, you know, more local aid, <laughs> more money in general for the town. Um, I think that the point you just talked about and what the selectmen were talking about, you know, what's hot? What's the state pursuing? What are other communities getting money for? What what's actively happening in the legislature? That we should be aware of that maybe we can we can take advantage of and it could be funding related kind of stuff it could be support or resources that we end up currently paying for but maybe there's a way that there are things going on that we're just not aware of um, what can they do in terms of um, regionalization uh, activities places that are successful uh, things that the state is promoting and supporting you know, again where where are the things that we don't know about um, Purchasing, are there group purchasing opportunities that we're not involved with or familiar with? Um, not just for surplus things, but for, for action. And the schools do a nice job of that. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. I think about RMLD also. We do some of it DPW, salt, sand, that kind of stuff. Yep. And maybe there's a way to, to pull it even further that, that they could help coordinate with us or have a discussion. Um, RMLD and purchasing. So. One of the things that's happening is we're successful with conservation efforts. Our energy needs go down, and the leverage for purchasing goes down accordingly. Um, how do we how do we get advantage out of that? We're doing the right thing. It shouldn't be getting penalized. 
um, are there, is there information across the state or even beyond the state that could be helpful? Are there broader consortiums that can, can be involved? If the state was supporting it, maybe that could help. Um, I keep thinking about technology. I mean, if you look at all the things going on, the bumps and the changes are technology, 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 which we can't support sufficiently. What can the state do along those lines? Is there anything? Is that part of uh, their their overall effort? Although whoever is working on the websites is probably not, not something we're going to bring on board. It's not the health website. Well, how about the whole health care discussion too? The whole health care discussion would be great beyond just GIC, but what's going mm -hmm. on? So you know, what are kind of ideas? And, and I think that they're going to they'll love kind of hearing from residents. Um, and that would be great, but maybe their input up front can kind of help structure what we're going to talk about afterwards. We can encourage them to stay, and I'm sure they'll stay and listen for a while while it's productive. So I think if we go over the results of the first financial forum with them in the room, that'd be fine. That's feedback for them that they missed, if you will. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think we want to drag them through our budget, whatever else may follow. Yeah, I'm not sure there's going to follow. Right, and even some to me, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can summarize. Yeah, yeah, there, there are a couple of categories. Yes. I'll, I'll give you an example of a letter that I wrote to Catherine Clark while she was here, and I forwarded to her successor. Um, there was a bill in front of the Senate that was to allow people, or communities rather, to come into the MWA for free. And hard luck on those that are already paid. And I said, okay, no, that doesn't work. Um, why is it that Reading, that always does the right thing, is always not the one that gets rewarded for the right thing? Why is it the communities that always do the wrong thing end up getting the benefit for the wrong decision? So it's not right. I mean, what are you trying to encourage here? And um, so that's the kind of thing that, you know, I understand the MWA needs more customers. They need to sell more water. We're, we understand it very well. We're in the same position they are. We need to sell more water, but we're supposed to conserve. We all have fixed costs. There's conservation cutting into your revenue. They need more customers. Um, I have no problem if they subsidize new clients, but they better subsidize the old ones too. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have $8 million of debt on the books that we're paying in order to get in. Okay, give us a little help there. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I don't like the fact that this state tends to penalize those that do the proactive thing and reward the ones that are, if you will, lazy. Financially, they, they don't make the tough decisions. I mean, I mean, it's a great general topic of rewarding good performance. And it actually comes back, Paul, to what you're talking about too with retaining employees. I mean, part of that is you know, what do you do when things are, are good? How do you reward that? Um, if we're trying all these things, we're, we're the model for this. We have Arnie Duncan coming to visit for that. Okay, help us out. And don't just say you know, you're not poor performing, so you don't get any support. Hmm. Yeah, we're, we're doing a reasonably good job spending our own money on things we think is important that others are recognizing, but there's real no benefit other than our own. We feel good about ourselves. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm not saying there should be. But I don't want you to go down the street and say to the other town, oh, you've done a lousy job. You should have been like Reddy. Here's a couple million bucks. Try to act like that. <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't work. And that's what happens. That's a great topic for that. Any thoughts? What do you think we want to do at the forum, first of all? Are those yeah. goals? I mean, I think it would be good to, like you were saying, to have them sort of help lead the discussion. Because there are topics that aren't relevant to what they can do, you know, or they're not hot topics, then why burden them with it at this point? Because it's not going to do us any good as a town. So I think kind of having them start the discussion after we maybe just give them a general overview. Is a good idea. And a question I've already asked the three of them is be, be ready to explain why, when the state's revenue goes up 5%, our state gate goes up 1%. <laughs> right, I think that's So you just explain question. that and I'll just listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And if it's you fix that, we'll in. let you go home early. That's it. Yeah. 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 And one of them will say, I filed a bill to make it the same. And my colleagues on the other side didn't support it. And they'll stare at those two. And we'll see what happens. Awkward. <laughs> Well, the three of them actually get along really well. Yeah. But I think we should give them the points that we spoke of to, so that they can become as yeah. prepared yeah, as possible. exactly. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send you an email, Mark, before I send it out tomorrow. I'll think about all the different things we probably want to ask them about. And let it prepare us. And a couple of them have called me saying, I really need to prepare. Yeah, 
I think the question about like what what state resources or reimbursements are we not tapping into is a really great question because I'm sure we're not thinking of everything. Or maybe maybe Reading does a lot of things right. Maybe we are, but no, I, I think it would be good. Hopefully, there's lots of things we're missing. Right. They can tell us about. So I think that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so bring the, the judge, Judge yeah. Judy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two of them are like brothers. They've been doing this for years. Okay. Senator Lewis is new to the scene, so I, I can't say as much. The other two boys enjoy each other's company and differences. <laughs> yeah, they don't typically grandstand. No, this yeah. is a chance to, to yeah, bring them all together. It's a yeah. great opportunity. What they do at Beacon Hill. Right. At the local level, they're tremendous. Right. We couldn't ask for a better representation yeah. than we get. Unless they could bring in some more money. Well, uh, nice. But yeah, if they yeah. had the last word, and that they would. <clears throat> what do you think? So that you know, that's the first half hour. Mm -hmm. um, do we maybe we give them kind of a quick overview of what's going on first? I think you give them a a financial form one overview, a general budget overview that takes ten seconds. Yeah. And then just turn it over to them, and I, obviously I can give them all this information in advance. Then they can speak. Um, then we can ask, start asking them questions. You know, here's, here's three to five prepared questions. Yeah. Right. And I think in the overview, we state our concern that we've all got is it's taking more and more to balance budget work. Yeah. Having free cash is not sustainable. And we, we can consider. imagine they've heard this once or twice. Yeah. So. Not really a lot that's unique about Reading, I would say. Um, other than we really haven't had an override in a very long time, mm -hmm. and we're a community that needs to have an override because we're residential. Other communities like cities don't have overrides. Melrose, um, their school gets the mi minimum, if you will, money that is prescribed by formula, and they have a much higher commercial base. So it's a, you know, I don't, I'm not saying they don't need an override because they really do. Um, but they're not statistically set up as Reading to need one as often mm -hmm. that way. Um, being 90-10 and being very supportive of education and having a lot of kids in the town relative to most towns. Just by math, we're designed to run out of money faster than most people, no matter how efficiently we spend it. And actually, our numbers show that we're not that supportive. We're like ranking down the bottom. In yeah. Massachusetts, so we yeah. think we're being smart, well, but we're, we're not. We're we don't have the budget to be supportive. Yeah, for a pupil, <laughs> we don't appear to be supportive. There's lots of reasons, but the bottom line for a lot of this is that Reading supplies four or five or six million dollars more in the annual school budget than we're required to do. That's one measure. There's plenty of cities and towns that don't. They do zero. So I'm not making a value judgment. It's just a statement. Fact. There's lots of ways to measure things. There's, there's no right and wrong here. I, I would have to say, though, the community values education. That's why a lot of us moved here. Right. So maybe we should be valuing if they have an override more often. That's a different question. Uh, Bob, did you show us the rough numbers as you did tonight? I don't see how we think we can right. go into the cycle without thinking we're headed for an override, though. That's yeah. right. Well, yet you're, you're not likely to rouse one up by next spring, I would say. Never I don't know. know why you think that. Well, because we're going to have a lot of money in the bank. Whatever the number is. Unless you're thinking free cash a lot higher than I'm thinking. Okay. Well, <laughs> it was close to 10% before we regenerated any. Right. So it's at least 10% of the budget. That's 8 million bucks. Whatever it is, is going to be larger than you would ask for in an override for the first year. Right. And there's going to be people that say, no, that's too high. But what we need to do and what we need to talk about, there's a lot of other one-time, if you will, uh, opportunities to spend money. Uh, the Board of Selectmen and I, and in some cases the school committee, has had a number of executive sessions, and we can't talk about them yet. But there's some very interesting possibilities that will require some serious money. 
that will bring in revenue in the future, but you need to put an outlay up first. So keep that in the back of your mind. We'll be able to talk to you about it at some point in the winter. Um, there's a reason we might want that free cash and not have it be tied up in the budget. But it'll eventually act like an override, if you will, and pay a dividend. It's not going to Las Vegas. Right, because those are the options we have to look for. Right. Because we're sitting on some cash, and yet yeah. we can't sustain an operating budget. So the legislatures, for instance, know some of the things we're talking about. We just can't talk about the financial front. It's just not appropriate. Um, and they're being very helpful. You know, and we all understand the predicament we're in. We're trying to solve the creative. So one of the things to think about is how to structure that last piece on ideas on sources of funds, yeah. and how to channel that in a very constructive fashion, uh, which would be a little bit of a challenge. I think what we what we did in the past, and actually I don't think I have it with me, but going back three years or whatever we did that before, mm -hmm. um, you know, we did the same kind of put things on up on the board, but we asked people for um, constructive ideas. So an override obviously is is one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what else? And just kind of going through it. And you know, the reality will be that some of them maybe can bear some fruit that's small. Maybe there are some bigger ones that are there. Uh, but if we want to hit the priorities we're talking about, you know, it's gonna suck down free cash or it needs a new source of revenue. In those numbers, by the way, where did you put uh, meals tax and excise taxes? Like, uh, Level? Um, a little bit higher. Uh, higher than um, where we think they're going to come in or higher than previous. Meals tax is probably a realistic number. Mm -hmm. um, excise tax is so hard to tell, but if if last year wasn't a fluke and we just stay there, it's probably still a little underestimated. But it goes up and down, two or three hundred grand, and a down, including not just up. Yeah. So it's really hard to know. I don't know if people are in some big buying cycle. It was shocking because we have all kinds of data. We know when payments come in, mostly in February, and all of a sudden by the end of the year it was just much higher than any of us thought. I don't know why. I haven't studied the, when it came in, but it was definitely after the first week of February. That's when I last looked. So, you know, why did you suddenly get a couple hundred grand more than you had any reason to think you'd get? I have no idea. Hopefully it wasn't an error. And that's what it went through. That happens. <laughs> Any other thoughts on, on the uh, on the form? Any other things you want to make sure we cover that we haven't talked about? So you're thinking of using the sheets paper here for us? Yeah, do you want to do overhead, uh, you know, laptop, all that? Um, I think yes. I think okay. we want to show the numbers that way. I think we want to show the results that way. Yeah, that'll be, yeah, I mean, I mean the first one was work. definitely more of a group kind of activity, if you will, so we stayed away from that, but now there's results for one thing to share. Yeah, and I'd say with the legislators too, if it turns out that they decide they have a charge to do that, yeah. well, then they have the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Do you know, a quick overview, half an hour for them, or half an hour for them to talk, and then we kind of dig into the sources, some ideas. We do it with the stickies again. So if you can bring the colored dots, that would be great. Um, why don't we talk about publicity? So um, knowing that it's next Wednesday, um, I sent a note to the to the papers electronically just to give them kind of a, a blur without giving out way too much other than legislators are all going to be there. It's at the College Middle School, uh, multi-purpose room. You know, everybody's invited. Free food. Didn't say that. Um, maybe something we should consider. <laughs> well, we did it last year, kind of as a, I mean, last meeting as a test run. Um, and the school committee's comments were lobster. We can afford lobster. I said it was the finance committee. They can afford it. <laughs> 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 hey, is that bus going again? <laughs> um, I, I got a lot of good feedback. You know, there's a lot of people, whether you are an employer or much more often a volunteer, you rush into these meetings. You didn't get the dinner you wanted, if, if you got to stop at all. And just to have some ability to then sit for three hours and have some food is just a nice thing. I don't think we want to make it happen, but 
honestly, at things like this, if it at the margin gets a few more people there, great. If it keeps them there. Right, I almost want to tell them ahead of time. So you have to. Like, yeah. There's a yeah. Yeah, I mean, know what I would definitely go. All right. Yeah. Right. And we can still send out to our 4,000 email subscribers that would be great. Um, we something on Monday. Probably. That would be great. I don't want to go too much in advance. Agreed. Um, do it on Monday, middle of the day, mm -hmm. end of the day. Mm -hmm. Hey, a reminder. Right. It's coming out. Okay. Are we all subscribed by default or by town meeting members? Or I know. The part where you can see the list online, I bet I'm wrong. We okay. can also do it to all the volunteers. Just to make sure that it uh -huh. works. That would be a big well, every list that they have. Yeah. Okay. That would be very good. Okay. Some people will get it two, three, four times. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and to your suggestion, I think we encourage all boards yeah. invite two friends, get yeah. two mm -hmm. friends to come along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it would be fantastic to have you know, 100 plus people come. That would be really great. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about approaching uh, a couple of the uh, folks in town that are bakers, and asking them each to kind of kick in a few dozen treats. Oh, company. That's a, that's an ethics issue I won't get involved in. The <laughs> wrong here is you can do what you want. <laughs> right. That's a that's a tough road. Yeah. We yeah. use local yeah. people and we just we tell them send me a bill and they send a bill and I don't discuss whether it's high, low, or medium. I just pay it. Usually they're quite reasonable, but that's not requested or expected. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd rather just stay away from that. Yeah. I understand your point, but we should not go there. Yeah. So if we don't do it that way, we probably should supply water and cookies or something like we'll that. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. Any comments or questions? <laughs> <laughs> right, but I wonder if you tell places, oh, okay, we're going to order food and don't ask for any discount. Say, and you're welcome to put a tent card on that you provide. Help. You know, we get requests all the time of businesses that want to give free stuff to employees, and we say no. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to offer financial planning for employees. No. Yeah. Talk to right. them as individuals, yeah. and they're not going through the employer. Mm -hmm. So we just are really careful about all we say no. We're even careful about what goes up in the outside hallway that's public property, but we don't want to promote for-profit endeavors. I don't care what it is. Um, we're a little less careful, and I, there's been some discussion about it in our every other Thursday bi-weekly notes and in our community, your community connection that goes out every two months. There's a huge amount of advertising. Karen's got a copy. Yeah, it's my best. Thing. As far as we know, and as far as we can tell, it's all nonprofits. But have I studied everyone's financials? No. It's just kind of this chicken soup test. You look at it and you go, oh yeah, you're a preschool? Fine. Um, you have to be really careful as the employer as the town for what you seem to endorse. We've had a lot of discussion about the website. People would be thrilled to be on the website and seen as a choice for something. And they'll pay us for that. Oh, oh no. The town's not going to be in the business of endorsing people. So no, it's not like you're going to put in. The official Red Sox barbecue sauce. We're not doing anything like that. Now, honestly, is it wrong? It's not wrong. Um, you know, town council could be asked and probably give an opinion that it's okay as long as you file all the right disclosures. But it just has the appearance of right wrong, right, for, for 100 cookies. I mean, there are towns, not in Massachusetts, but in the Midwest, that do advertising on the side of police and fire vehicles. Nothing illegal about it. We could do that. We've talked about that. We'll save that for the discussion about the sources of funds. We'll have to find yes. two new chiefs, just to be clear. But. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good on this. If you could you know, just add into that note that uh, I'll send you some. Um, I'll I'll shoot for sending it to them on Friday. So if you don't hear from me tomorrow, tomorrow's a bad day. We'll let you know by Monday, uh, Friday morning. Okay. Let's go to the, the last item before that's the library project update. All right, Rob. Um, well, you want to do what you did first? Sure. I actually not sure if I got a copy. Um, there's oh. extras here. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just, um, I was going to say, we are having a, a financial um, focused library building community meeting tomorrow, STV. So um, I passed out the budget update from August 21st because that's the most current one I have, so I apologize for my notes. Um, and I'll just call the lady. Yeah, the to clarify, STV is the project manager, right? Yes, our owner's project manager that we hired. There's a handout that I let I lettered them just to distinguish. If you look at page A, um, 
as of March, this was the cash flow projection to spend the 18 for. This is what month and when, not necessarily what, but just the cash flow. And then below that, I'm tracking the actual cash flow. And then the bottom one is how different are we on a cumulative basis? And the fact you see a $700,000 surplus means we're going slower than we thought, which is not surprising. Mm -hmm. But the surprising thing to me, and Karen. Sorry, can you bridge where, where, where's that seven? The, the, the number at the very bottom of A that is a running total of how much surplus there is versus what we thought we'd spend. Oh, okay. and, and Karen, what this tells us is we're only a month behind. And the discussion in the building committee would suggest we're three or four months behind. But that's just not true. Mm -hmm. On a cash flow basis, we're one month behind. Right, so, but did you just say that was a non financial focus group? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I didn't say that, but I agree with it. Oh, okay. So this gives you a picture that we are keeping track of the project at a high level, certainly. And this is really important because we don't want to run out of cash. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's on the next page. Um, the top section is the state grant and when we have been paid or expected to pay. Right. The middle section is when we plan to issue debt. So right now we're planning on February 1st, 2015, issuing 13 and a quarter million permanent fund on funding probably for 10 years. And then the bottom section is sort of cash flow management where we're going to need a little bit sooner than we borrow in February 1st, depending on the pace of construction. We're also going to leave, need a little at the end of the project because the state grant's going to come in two years after the project is done and paid for. So we're going to have to tidy that up towards the end of the project. So in other words, we also have to keep track of this from a cash flow standpoint. All we have in cash right now is the two million and forty thousand the state has given us. That's the only cash available until we borrow. But associated with the spending, time, I assume there are tasks that you're yeah, looking to accomplish. Yeah, and we'll get to that in that we'll okay. for a little bit. Okay. On C, this is just a picture for you to see of what the debt exclusion will look like if we do a ten year, which I think we'll do. It's a million and a half a year for ten years. So that's you know on track to everything. We Discussed um, at prior town meetings. Um, on the next page, uh, letter D, this wraps up some of the things we discussed tonight in terms of the debt we're planning to issue if all these articles are approved. So the first column is the library will issue the 13 and a quarter, and that'll pretty much be our local share. We have a little bit extra, but we'll just leave that alone for now. There's the West Street project for million three. And then there's that three and a half million dollar piece if approved by a September town meeting. So we'll issue 18 million dollars in change of long-term debt. And again, we'll have a better idea uh, as we go through the fall as to how accurate this, this is going to be. And then tied in with the handout Karen gave you, um, this is our internal accounting system and how we look at money that's spent. So if we start with page E, the first figure is uh, revenue, so the negative is actually you know, a negative cost, it's the revenue. We've got $2 million payments from the state, we're expecting $5 million. That's a journal entry. Um, down below, you can start to see where we're spending money. Um, the first category is um, architect fees. And you can see a monthly, more or less, running total of architect fees. Um, we've spent a total of 629000 on architect fees through today. There's also some reimbursements that the architect gets. That's another 13,000 we spent. That's things like mileage and supplies. And we've had to outfit uh, library technology, uh, both for the temporary space and for the new one, and we've spent some money on that, not a lot. There was some hazardous uh, prep work done, uh, some sampling done early in the project. You can see one of them was last February. Uh, there's another 25 grand. The STV, the project manager, today we've spent 88000 on. Um, just to give you a summary, the architect fees of 600 odd thousand, we signed a contract for a little over a million with them, so they're about 60, 65% on spending. Um, the project manager, uh, it's hard to be so specific on that. It depends on how the project goes. They're certainly under budget so far, though. Um, then there's some other things that, that probably aren't that important, but I will say the temporary lease we've put in a separate place. So you'll see we're paying a $12,083 monthly lease payment, and 
we pay a, a one-time security deposit of 13000 and that's our only outlay so far to the uh, plan. They're building out space right now. We will owe them about $100,000 for the build-out. Um, we also oh, market will, baskets back. And, so market basket. and there's a liquor store home. right next door, so we'll go there often. <laughs> Read, shop, and drink. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> the, um, the technology costs that we're going to have to outfit the space are starting to come in. So what this doesn't really do is give you a sense of how on track or not it is, but it also but it does give you a sense of where the money's being spent. Um, what we will do at some point when we get the bids is we'll fill in the field the fields of what are the expected budget numbers for this. So right now with this everything's a zero. So it just shows that as a negative total. When you spend a thousand, it's negative a thousand because we haven't assigned a budget number. When the bids come in and we have a good idea of how to divide up this 18.4 million, then you'll have a much clearer sense of are we on track or not? How does this look? But we just can't do that yet. The last page is a schedule. Um, as Karen knows, this changes every time we meet, sometimes twice or three times in between. Um, the last update is October 1st. The library closes and it opens two or three weeks later. And there's no reason that I'm aware of. Certainly from the temp space, it looks like it's making really good progress. Uh, I can't remember if I've told you this, Karen. I may have sent you an email. But the discussion we had at the last building committee meeting was sort of pessimistic on that row, road. But they should say. They absolutely cleared up things yeah, fast. That's true. They did yeah. mention that. Yeah, OK. That was going to push the whole project back considerably. Yeah, considerably, it could have added a month. But no, that's not, that's not a problem at all. I don't know if that's the same with Karen gave me. Mine is definitely the most up-to-date. Yeah, um, I'm actually comparing what we discussed on 7.30 okay. with this. And the only thing that's a little bit different is this last date rolled up in a little bit. Okay. And the new library, 414, 325, so that's a couple weeks. Yeah, and I got a little buffered. Yeah. Yeah, and you can expect all this is going to change yeah. frequently. Um, at some point, we have to just decide the library's closing. That's it, you're, you're, you're out. And it looks like October 1st, more or less, whatever can be the day is, you know, will be that day. Um, we'll do the best we can. Uh, moving a library is not easy. We've hired someone to do it, but our staff is also going to do some of it in terms of technology, for instance. Um, we can't know ahead of time whether they can open in two or three or four weeks once they close. Two weeks would be very optimistic and what we're hoping for and shooting for, but I don't know that it's realistic. Three weeks is probably realistic, and then four weeks is you run into some issue, which you do, you run into the issues. Um, you, know, it, you can understand that the library building committee and the library wants to be closed as little as possible, but to run a project, you have to be realistic, not optimistic, and I told them all along the plan in three weeks. A real wild card here, just as kind of a comment, is none of us have any idea how busy this temporary library is going to be. Mm -hmm. Is everyone going to keep going? Well, the answer to that has to be no, because they won't be able to run programs, as many programs. Mm -hmm. um, are people going to stay away completely? Well, I doubt that. Mm -hmm. Where does it meet in the middle? I don't know. the parking, actually, because it never seems to me like there's tons of extra parking over there. But and there will be now. So, Parking should be pretty good where they're moving. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of empty space. If it was fully yeah. occupied, the parking would be a little tight. Um, they're also planning to demo the rear of the building so that the staff could, in theory, be all parked in the rear for all this building. Okay. Um, they go right where the basilica is, right? Um, where Frugal Fanny's used to be, a little to the right. Down next okay, to the Okay, that's basket. way too wide. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't that. that. Nice go. Oh, I sure. <laughs> Fresh in my mind. I thought they were going right. You're looking at Market Basket. I thought the liquor store they just closed. That was the library space. Am I completely no, wrong? Oh, that's hoping okay. to be a restaurant. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So no, further. The, I don't the even know that. The newspaper ran okay. a story with a headline and a picture. The picture was wrong. Okay. Oh, that's it. Because there's always because of the yeah because of the stores that are there now. There's not a lot of parking. Okay. Right okay. right right all the books. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're calling the collection. They're now. calling the collection. Um, 
we're going to have storage in the same place, which is great. Okay. Instead of getting a separate place for storage, yeah. it's a warehouse. They mm -hmm. gave us, and they actually given us free storage okay. in terms of lease. Okay. Uh, we're getting 5,000 to 7,000 square feet of storage. Um, the library is deciding what that means to them, whether you can go back into the storage and find a book or not. That's a complete cut mm -hmm. to them. I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. Um, it ranged from cold storage, which is put it away for two years, forget you have it, to available storage, and I honestly don't know how right. to solve that. Right now, in the system, then it's helping, and there's just some out of circulation, you know right. what I mean? That's a big logistical challenge. Yeah. You know, they have a good sense of what's necessary, I'll say, or most in demand. Yeah. Um, and they also have a great interlibrary loan, so if it's mm -hmm. packed away in a box, right. Wakefield will probably. Yeah, right. right, but then right. systematically they have to take it out of circulation. Yeah, you know, that book. Yeah, mm. And again, they're going into optimistically one third of the space with the yeah. same amount of staff. Yeah. So, there's a liquor store next door. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, I, I don't know what the public will be like, but the, you know what the library's like now. It's just jam packed, and it's mm. a lot of little kids, a lot of programs. Mm -hmm. They don't have the space for the kids' programs anymore. Mm. Um, high it, they do have very high ceilings with not a lot of sound absorption. Um, the schools, as I understand this second hand, have been very helpful recently when they were asked, do you have any facilities for program space? They found it. I don't know how. I think it's not so much during the day, but some of the off hour days. But they have found some space during the day. Or in particular in summers, perhaps. Yeah. And this space will be HVAC, it will have air conditioning, so you know, it should be fine for next summer, for now. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a project, it certainly had its bumps along the way, but we're not in bad shape right now. We'll see when construction bids come in, that's a huge wild card. But, but they're, they're comfortable with big documents building nine months? Yeah. We've already got a contract in the RFP, so there won't be any contract haggles. Uh, new town constitution. Why do you do it this way? Why didn't we think of that 10 years ago? And then we, we had one two year contract negotiation with software method. And we said, we can't break mass state law. We don't care, we're a California company, then we're not going to pick you. But we want you to pick us. Well, we can't break mass state law. Remember that discussion? That was document storage. It took two years to get there. Huh. There was no good competitor, or we had just picked them. Huh. And we can't afford spending four months negotiating a contract to build a library. You know, we got to get going. You know, they're saying, um, you never know, but unlike health insurance, there could be some real good competition here. Health insurance, we're not going to expect that, but here we might. And it's a lot of work. The project manager's done a good job generally so far, and it's, they're going to be busy. I guess, though, to, to comment earlier, um, you know, FinCom, the town manager, and others have been sort of at arm's length from this process for quite some time until the last three or four months is probably a fair statement. Um, we changed that, which it should be fine. I have no desire to have any input into what rug color they pick in the library. We had a whole meeting about stuff like that once. I care more about the stuff I showed you tonight. How are we tracking? Are we on track? Um, what does the lease look like? You know, the big picture items. I don't. I don't have anything to do with how you run a library once it's finished. That's it's not my business, it's also not my interest. But I want to make sure I know what the budget is, I know what the expectations are. Um, you know, I think FinCom should absolutely be involved and be updated, but you certainly are not going to be consulted for change orders, just to be clear. That's not practical, and that would never happen in a building project. Um, you know, that's something we have a project manager, we have an outside project manager and an inside one, Joe Huggins, that work well together, they'll figure it out. I told them I'd break the ties if I had to. Um, so was it the project manager who came up with this sort of rate of spend? Yeah. 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 And you can see it's pretty old. And at that point, I think we thought we were going out to bid in June-ish. We're still not out to bid. But the project really isn't that delayed yet because the bid was expected then, then the award, it was conservative in the original estimate. Um, assuming bids come in and, and there's a good bid in there to be, to be used, you know, timing-wise we're fine. 
uh, our treasurer and I agreed that we were both feeling very uncomfortable to borrow money until we got the bids. What if the bids come in at 25 million? Oops. That's another discussion with FinCom town meeting the town and so on. I'm not saying I expect that, but never <laughs> happened. I know. But, but uh, you, know, you, you don't want to go borrow an 18 million and then say, oops. oops. So you know, that's why we put it on. You can see on this list from um, Fogarty that the, so the project is officially on budget, but these alternatives are not included. Um, the innovation room inside the port post chair was voted to be a by the committee to be the most popular alternative funding allowed. allowed. Um, so that either. I'm sorry, what are you bringing up? This one? Is that Karen has a hand out? It's double sided. Oh, it's a different. I don't have that. But I think that's it, I think. Oh. We'll go over here. There you go. That's it. So the total construction cost is 13 to million. Mm -hmm. That's that's the budget. So we're on budget. So these alternatives down below are prioritized, but they're outside of the budget. Mm -hmm. So unless they can value re-engineer or draw other things out of the project, those things aren't happening. I think that's what's what, the innovation. That would be the port, cor port corsair. It's a it's a space. It would be glassed in um, instead of just being. You know, in the front of the building, they right. would actually make that room. there now. They want to turn it. They make it a glass oh, room. Okay. One, yeah, one gotcha. floor. Yeah. Um, so either you know, if things fall out of the budget, then that might leave room for it. I guess you know. I think the concern from the financial management side is um, on the budget sheet. There are the two big contingencies: the the project contingency going back to the spreadsheet. Um, it's like a million, isn't it? Yeah. It's a million. And then there's the construction contingency is the other one. So the project contingency, that's really like, oh, we'd like to have that. Let's take that out of there. And I think we're thinking that's where the whole keeping us at arm's length needs to change. So that when these, so this budget is like getting pretty solid so that now they can involve us and when budget line items change significantly, we'll talk about what's significantly, I think, and if we're gonna make um, withdrawals for contingencies, what's the approval process, who needs to be involved? Yeah. And as well, we talked about, okay, so if requirements from programming or running of the library fall off the table, how do those, like with some of the detail that Bob had in the warrant tonight, oh, we're returning money to this bucket. So that's kind of, we haven't had that kind of level of project involvement. We're hoping to get that. And the, and the way the thing should work and legally is set up to work is the library building committee is advisory to Joe Huggins. Joe Huggins is advisory to me. By charter, I'm in charge of improvements to public buildings, even, even okay. schools, except for schools, even schools in some ways. Okay. So it's a question of, as a practical matter, how do you want it to execute? Mm -hmm. and Joe and Evan and I have talked about it, mm -hmm. that pretty much has to be those two. And they usually agree on everything. If they don't agree, then we have to take it to a bigger group. Um, and and any time there's anything that's significant, whatever that means, 50,000 mm -hmm. or more, we'll talk about it. Yeah. But if you think of the high school construction, there was change happening all the time. Oh, look what we just found behind this wall. You just can't call a meeting for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to, and we'll have to talk about it at a future meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the non-financial library building committee is not going to want that. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to be involved in every single decision and every single detail, and they can't be. It's just not practical. If it affects programming and the library, sure. But if it's a construction issue, no, mm -hmm. it's just not. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know what kind of kickback we'll get on that, but that's not the best way it's going to be. And typically, you know, most of your contingency, contingency is even at four say or better. In that first, you know, we had design contingency. That's all gone right. Now. right. So the design contingency is gone. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So this is this is structure project yes. contingency. Construction. Most of your price is going to be upon breaking ground and the initial. And this, setup. there's only one thing I remember being over budget to any degree, and that was the moving cost, the temporary, the moving. Well, so far, years. but I think the the and difference is. Yeah. We, I find out afterwards. We find out afterwards. Well, the decisions are already made. We need to yeah. be part so, of that. So that's far, the decisions have been the library director and the architect have worked to the exclusion of the project manager and any of us. 
But to me, again, it's design issues up till now. I'm not that concerned. But once it changes from design to construction, design is more their business. It's how their library looks. You could argue that maybe we should have been more involved, but once it turns to a construction project, that's very different. And that's no longer those people making construction decisions. I'm sorry, that's not their expertise. And, and I'm not comfortable coming to each monthly FinCon meeting and finding out that $500,000 of the contingency just got consumed. And I'm not comfortable going yeah. to a library building committee and finding out that we've just yeah. spent $200,000 on that. And that has happened. Just right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So, so you're yeah. saying that the bigger committee hasn't really been part of the architectural changes, the tweaks? I know I haven't been. I guess yeah. I can't really be sure. But how about the committee of, like, you know, you know, you know uh, Karen, correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong, but my impression is there's some very small group making a lot of decisions, and I know it's the library director and the architect, and I don't know if it might be one or two trustees. I don't think it's anyone else. I don't have that visibility. Yeah. I think it's been changed over and, the course of the last year, but that, I agree that I have concerns, and I haven't been enough. An architect and the librarian. <laughs> yeah. I think I like it. <laughs> so no, I'm that's very concerned. <laughs> oh, we've talked. I mean, because we just have no accountability. Where did the project? The, guess what? The owner's project contingency is gone, and we're like, well, you where did it go? A, a design that's beautiful, very expensive yeah. too. And and create. the project manager and myself have had our, have discussions with the president of the architectural firm, and read him the right act on a few occasions that this is not to be a mausoleum for the architect to put on his resume. This is to be a public facility that serves the public good with taxpayer money and watch out. <laughs> so believe me, that's gone on. We understand all the dynamics going on here. But we also have a great deal of respect for the fact that trustees and the library staff are going to be in this building. They have to have the, as much say as anyone could over what the building does inside. I know, but when they think, oh, if we do it that way, that would be really neat. They don't realize that costs twice as much to do it um, that way. Then. They're, they're finding that stuff out, and they've had to make some tough choices along the lines. And again, up till now, it's been bumpy, but it's okay. It has to change and has been changing for the last two or three months because it could not go on as a construction project the way it was being managed. And how are the rest of the community members being utilized? Because we've had some good resources. Their expertise has been invaluable, I would say. Yes, they've been... Um but how are they plugged in? Um, they instance, these small groups, like they're really, there have been small yep. groups as needed, but in common. For instance, part. there was a pre-qualification um, submission of all the subcontractors, yeah. and each um, Reading resident that had expertise evaluated all the stuff in their field. Okay. HVAC, Good. I took yeah. all the HVAC okay. stuff, okay. and okay. spent hours on boxes of material yeah, okay. evaluating. So they're being really yeah, effective. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a really good. So they're making, the again, those are construction decisions to me. And yes. they're being appropriately handled. Okay. Um, design is a little different. You know, there's design. The library and the design staff will work together. Those but I would think in the architect, I think it's too an integral part of design. She's more thinking logically, not how it, how it looks attractive. I mean, not to be too simple about it. But she's looking at things like flow of people, sight lines. Mm -hmm common sense architectural things as opposed yeah. to use this wood grain or that wood grain. She can have that discussion. That's not really her why she's going at it as well. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I got you. But in order to keep the good thing about having a budget and having a tight budget is you can't just add things in because you want them. Because choices have to be made. That is a budget. You want to have a lot of that, take away a lot of that. So the budget is constraining the library and the architect to behave towards the total. As long as we, as long as I think, as long as we keep the attitude that we don't have to spend that right. owner's project contingency. It's not wrong. Exactly. That's what I'm a little concerned of, that they're thinking that that is spent and done and can all be used. And A, it's not being tracked, and B, I don't think that way. I'm not thinking that way. We, I think we we as a community will make a decision as to how much of that contingency we would be willing to invest in this project with our input. And I think C is that we've already come back with the additional contingency fund as a town. Right. Yeah. So I don't see that there's another one available. No. So no, it is the budget. And they're on budget. 
So let's stay on budget. Maybe they have, but right. and you will, but you go oh, into yeah. it never thinking. I know corporate Little. sponsorship was talked about, and they said, and you said there was probably some resistance at the trustee level. Still, that, so that that hasn't moved at all. I, I I know there hasn't been any positive direction beyond that. I don't know. That, I think that's been yeah, surprising to me. Yeah, and I would think, can we do we have any influence no. that we can? <laughs> well, once they start not being able to yeah. do things, yeah. maybe that will give them the yeah, 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 that's the thing. Want that. well, it could seem yeah. right. I mean, it could be it could be significant to the overall budget. It really could. I mean, I I said to the the time the chair of the trustees I've had residents approach me asking how they can give a donation let me know nothing that, that seems what could be that seems more easy. easy now right. most people tell me they don't care anymore right two of them mm. businesses one business asked okay. can I sponsor a room sure. you have to talk to the trustees yeah. they they're the ones that need to direct that policy so David Hutchinson replied to me specifically at the last meeting that they have changed their thinking Good. Are open to free donations. Okay. At the beginning of the project, there was a lot of that talk. Yeah, we talked about it last off. summer. Yeah. We visited other libraries. I mean, it's a handful of libraries I visited. They all had obvious sponsors for rooms, desks, whatever, memoriams. Um, I'm not saying there's a right and a wrong, but I didn't understand the lack of wanting to have the discussion. And the answer we got at the time was the friends and the um, Foundation do plenty enough now. I just okay. think I've seen some flip flop because right after the committee was formed, when we were worrying about not even before we got the MRI, the second money yeah. from the town, and they were like, "Oh no, no, we can, we can raise money to pay for those furnishings, and then after we get the money, no, then that's kind of what I'm No. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they do understand that we're not going back to the town, uh, and if we have to, it's going to be an unbelievable emergency. Yeah, the great news is they're saying we're at ninety percent of our design yeah. is done, and we we're on budget. Yeah, we are, that's we're, really good. This is looking Ooh, solid. That doesn't always happen. Right. But we don't have bids yet. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna um, sell some leftover stuff from the library, raise a little money, whatever they don't need. <laughs> Anything else you want to cover on the uh, on the library project? Okay. Um, thank you for putting that together. That's great. Sure. Um, all right, should we take a look at minutes? So we have two, right? Yeah. Minutes, uh, two minutes. Motion to accept the minutes at 7.30. I wouldn't want to make a change. I was not present when I missed it as a meeting. I was there. I'm positive. I was on vacation. I don't get paid for that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Seconded, we made the change. Any other comments? All good. All those in favor? Mayor 800. Any other business for it tonight? No. Good work, guys. Bring your friends to show up next week. Yeah, 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 please. Bring your friends. Bring your friends. Cookies. Love your cookies. Where should we be? Where did you go? I don't know. Did you? What's that? Have you done I guess we did. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Could be a lot of long thin comments. Send it a week. Okay, you'll be the week on it. Well, I'll go shoot session. John an email about one that right up and I'll yeah. get you one. You know, I have both, I'll send them to you. I'm curious about that emergency stone. Uh -huh. I'm, curious. I'm curious about emergency stone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of a rock. Maybe we can sell it. <laughs> 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 <laughs